Hey, Fred. Hey, Fred. What's up? How you doing? You doing good? How you been? You been good? Hey, dude, can you play Elden Ring? I already beat Elden Ring. That was good. I know I said I was going to do uh, something else with Elden Ring, but I didn't do it. Me strong. Uh, let's play did not happen. <laughs> yeah, when is it? They have to. There's no way the DLC does not get announced in the next few months, right? They definitely have DLC that's planned for next year, right? Like 2023. That has to be. Has to be. How long did it take from um, Dark Souls 3 from launch the first DLC? A year? Year and a half? When are you going to do the Axe Self-Defense class? <laughs> Play Lost Ark. Hey, can you start being EU friendly for streams? I don't live in the EU, but I get up before the sun. So can you change your whole schedule to benefit me? <laughs> um, no, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry about that. I love the, hey, can you do EU streams? I don't live in the EU, but do it anyways. Uh, all right, we got some stuff to talk about. Some things to go over. First of all, let's go over what's going on this week. Okay, shh. Stop. This week, today, we got sorcery. Tomorrow, probably sorcery. Thursday, hmm, something. Something happening. Something happening on Thursday. I, w I won't tell you what, but I think uh, I think something's going on on Thursday you might find very interesting. Um, I... We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, excited for it. We'll see. And then Saturday, I'm going to tell you right now, Saturday is the day for Green Screen Part 2. Uh, I, I don't, I can't, I don't know if I can even tell. Hold on, let me see. Hold on. Yeah, okay. So, it, it, it is happening on Thursday. I, I'll, I'll let you know maybe in a little bit. Because I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if it's been talked about yet. So, maybe. Maybe I'll talk about it. Is it a poetry night? No. But yeah, so... Uh, this, let me tell you that I've been feeling a little under the weather. I'm in a colitis flare... I'm having problems once a year or so this happens it comes back maybe a couple times a year and uh i don't feel fantastic i don't feel great so we're gonna do more streams this week but less time so we'll do like three or four hours today three or four hours tomorrow however long the thing on thursday is and then obviously the green screen movie night will be about four ish five ish hours so we'll do more days but less time this week so we'll do about three days in a row here, and then Saturday. So, should be good. Now where, oh where, did this go? Uh, okay. There. Alright, so, we left off in sorcery. It's 11pm here? I... I mean, this is, hey, the, when you spin, the globe is big, and the globe has lots of time zones on it. 11 p. It's 11. Where? where wait, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Where are you in? Germany? Green screen movie night part 2 will be Saturday. And we're going to do it Saturday night. Saturday night. Saturday at like 4 p.m. 5 p.m. Pacific, Saturday night.
Very cool, very cool, very cool, very cool, very cool. All right, you guys ready? Shall we continue our story? I, I, it's been like a week, so let's refresh people what we're doing. Where we were. Some things we did. I hope the camera on. I hope it's not. Hey, it's not. All right, good. All right, so we left off. We were here. At the halls of Vlada. We still have the ape as the god. We'll give you a little uh, look of where we were. You remember we were in this house here. We got chased through the alleys. We went across the docks. Remember, I was in the water. I almost drowned three times. You remember before that, we were through here in the artist quarter. Uh, the giant stomped on that uh, guy's carpet stall. And I burnt the whole place down, I think. And then we rewound and I did it normally. Would you ever try psychedelics? No. No, I'm too fucked up already. Like, I... I've had this conversation about drugs before. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I don't, I'm, I don't condone or like drugs like that. I, I can't do them. I would never do them. I would never try them ever. No way. Too much. Way too much. And I think it is too much, right? You know, if you smoke marijuana, you know, you have a few beers, right? Cool. But like, it's too much after that. Anything after that's too much. At least that's my opinion on the whole thing. Jerma, nobody believes you. <laughs> that's fine. I don't need to prove to anybody that I don't do crack. Right? Like I, all, all I can tell you is, guys, I don't do crack. I don't believe you. I don't care. That's fine. I don't, I don't care. I don't give a shit if you don't believe me that I don't do crack. I don't have to like get on stage in front of 20, 30,000 people and sit there and go, guys, I don't do crack. I promise. Everybody just booing. Boo, you yeah, fucking liar. I just have to sit there and go, that's fine. You are free to believe whatever you want. That's the whole show. And then the curtain comes down. All right. So here we are now. This is what it looks like. We're going down here. We're trying to get the, 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 the poem for the door. I'll show you the clues. Which, by the way, you can't even hear anything. But now you can. Let's open up the, uh, let's take a look at what we got. Let's get that music going. Alright, so we have a lot of beeswax, a skull cap, two doses of blimberry juice, a bamboo flute, eight goblin teeth, a giant's tooth, green-haired wig, bracelet of bone, and a sun jewel. We got a lot of items. I still have my standard sword. And here are the clues. The North Spell Gate. Remember, the North Gate requires a spell made of four lines. Without the lines, you will not be able to leave the city port. The fifth noble, Sh uh, Shinva. Lord Shinva is the fifth noble. Korga. Remember this? The ritual of Korgor involves his three eyes, the left eye, right eye, and the third eye, and I'm gonna puke. If you don't, okay, I gotta, let me give a refresher on Sorcery. Sorcery is a choose-your-own-adventure game. Uh, it's back in like the 1960s, 1970s by Steve Jackson. It is a fantastic experience. One of the greatest, one of my favorite games of all time. We're doing it again because I passed a million followers. So where are we going? Are we going to go through the arch? Are we going to go to the halls of Vlada? Or are we going to go to the left fork? It's up to you. Remember, the game is from 2013. Yes, and it's the first game that I streamed on Twitch. I passed a million followers, so we're doing it again. This, I believe, is the gambling hall. Uh, the last thing we did was the statue. I think I can show you. Yeah, you go over to the statue, look at the pond. It seems to contain 20 gold pieces. We didn't take any money from this. People wanted me to, but I said no. I said no. Keep rubbing it in my face that you hit a million followers.
Well, I, what do you what do you mean? I'm not. That's not what I'm doing. All right, I, let's get a poll. Uh, are any mods around, or should I hop in the chat and do it? I can hop in the chat and do it if I need to. Would you ever do an IRL gambling stream? Uh, hold on, I'm doing a poll. Alright, so we're gonna go. This is one, two, and three. Keep that in mind. One, two, and three. Here we go. Oh, a poll's already active. Oh, shit. You didn't say no. I... Whatever. I didn't say anything. You said that. I didn't say shit. Remember, one, two, and three. Through the arch, one. The halls of Vlada, two. The left fork, three. And we are going to two. Here we go. Oh, do I still have my uh, voices? Let's see. Does this, this, this work? You enter the shade of a long hall filled with bodies and smoke, but strangely silent. No one is speaking. The only noise is the constant rattling of dice, which rolls around the raft and ceiling. Thunder. Only the occasional cheer and curse breaks the mood. By the door is a booth. The gaming tables are out in the main hall. A great cheer goes up from one of the tables. Is there, is there a huge amount of echo? <laughs> Shit. There's not supposed to be that much echo. <laughs> oh, fuck, I'm sorry. Is that better? Is that better? Okay. It's mad. <laughs> Oops. Wow, wrong Discord, dude. Oh, I got the wrong Discord. All right, so here we go. We got a booth. We have the gaming tables. Let's check the booth out first. You go over to the booth where a spin lady is handing out gambling chips. She smiles at you. Welcome, sir. She croons in a voice which sounds like a crocodile pretending to be a songbird. How much can I get you? Uh, how much should I take? What's the game? What's the game? The lady laughs. <laughs> what else? Swindle stones. Do you know how to play? Of course I do. I could hardly be in Kari for a day and not know. No, she replies. Then she drops her voice down low. But you'll find the players here are quite good. Okay. Um, I'll take, yeah. How much money did I have? 28? I just gave her 28 gold? You hand over all your money. The spin lady counts it out slowly and meticulously as though she was not very good at counting. Then she hands over 28 chips and an assortment of colors. Have fun! I didn't want to go all in. <laughs> what? That's not good. You walk out into the hall. Players of all races and descriptions sit at either side of two long wooden benches, starting games with each other, fighting them out, and then exchanging chips and moving on. It's like a kind of stately dance, played with a great dedication and almost entirely in silence. An old man, a grizzled sailor, and a bristly innkeeper are waiting to play. We went all in. <laughs> Oops. All right, so let's look at the tables. First of all, hold on, what's going on here? It's crazy. The tables are arranged in different sections by the size of the bet and the number of dice to be played. Sad-looking creatures move down from high-stakes tables to lower ones. Brassy and bold creatures move up. At the two-chip tables are the old man and the sailor. At the table with the ten-chip bet, the innkeeper is waiting to play. 
The old man and the sailor have just finished a game. The old man must have won because he stands, cracks his knuckles, and moves to the five-piece table. The sailor shifts down to the table with the five-chip wager. It's the same innkeeper? Um, I don't know. It might be. <laughs> Cash out. All right, that was fun. I've, I've moved him around in my hands for a few minutes. I'm out of here. Uh, let's just, hold on, let's wait and watch. You sit back and watch for a while. The players on the tables form themselves into pairs and settle down to play in deathly silence. The rattle of dice fills the hall like a clash of swords in a barrack room. Nearby, on the five-stake table, the old man and the sailor finish a tense game. The sailor must have won because he stands up, barks a laugh, and moves to the table with the ten-chip stake. The old man shifts down to the cheap table. How many chips does the old man have? I feel like this is a fucking math question in a math book. How many chips did the old man come in with? Okay. Uh, the spin lady leaves the booth at the front of the hall and makes a circuit of the room, offering refreshments at the cost of four gambling chips. The burly innkeeper buys two rolled up flatbreads and devours them without looking. That's, that's four gold. All right, I'll do it. You buy a hill fox thigh and eat it quickly. Someone curses from the back of the hall, but no one seems to notice. All right, let's. Should I pick a table? We going? Are we going to the big bet, or what? What are we doing for bets? Should I just keep waiting? Maybe, maybe a fight will break out. Should I, I just ca just cash out after watching the fight? It's gonna be a fight, right? It has to be. You stand back and watch the players. Over on the tables with the ten chip bet, the sailor and the innkeeper have played each other. The sailor shifts down to the medium table. All right. All right, pick a table. At one end, games are being played for stakes as low as two. Uh, at the other end, players are betting 20 on each game. Most tables also offer long games with four or five dice each, alongside shorter two or three dice games. But not all the tables have players ready to play. You look across the tables. At the table with the two chip wagers, the old man. At the five piece tables, the sailor. And at the other side is the ten chip with the innkeeper. I... Alright. Are we doing long ten, short two, or, or, or short five? I mean, I, I took 28 chips. 27 chips. We gotta go ten. It's the same guy. You take a seat across from the innkeeper, who you do not recognize from your travels through the city. Okay, a different person. Let's make this quick, he says, his nervous eyes giving the lie to his weary smile. The innkeeper counts up five dice each and waves you to bed. Here we go, swindle stones. Okay. How about we lead at... Hmm... One... Two ones. Let's just fuck with them. Three threes. Mm. Three threes. So I got one. Four threes. Call. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Did I get swindled? What? Alright, I got swindled. It's okay. It's alright. It's alright. It's alright. It's alright. Alright, this guy's a good player. This guy's a good player. I got it. I got it. Are you staying in Kare for long? Two fours. Shit. He started... Okay, what about twos? I have... I have one two. He might have a two. That's bad. This is a bad start. Because if I because I have one, I'm gonna say three, uh, three threes. Call it. That's fine. There's no way you don't have one three out of out of you. you got five there, right? Holy shit! What I got? There's nothing I could do there. I'm actually in trouble now.
two, two threes. Say three threes and let me win this. There we go. There we go. All right, let's go for it. There's no way. Call that. There it is. We're coming back. We're coming back. Oh, this is huge. This is a huge deal. Oh. Oh, that you think they're... Oh, yeah, you're already saying there's one? What? Did I, why don't I just go this fucking four? Right? Should, he'll, do you think he'll call this? If I say there are three, or should I go with there are... Should I say there are four? Do you think he, he probably has one, right? He's going to call this, and he's going to lose. Call it. Call it. What? No way. So one, two, three, four. He must have at least two. Shit. You have to call it. I can't do it for you. Call him on it, but he's probably going to have two. Oh my god, I could have said six. I should- I was gonna say six. I could have done six. I was gonna do six. You saw me do it. Come on. There are two twos. Okay. Call that shit. That means you have to have three. Fuck you. You don't have three. What the fuck? This guy's getting insane hands. It's stupid. It's actually not fair. I have one of those, too. Oh, fuck off. Again. Do it 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 again. He got three insane hands in a row. He, I got so screwed. I really did. All right. Let's start with one, two. Two fours. Okay. Let's do three fours. Call it. Four fours. Okay. Five fours. Do you think he has two? He's going to call it and I'm going to lose. Because that, so we both have two then. Let's do it. Don't call it. Got him. Actually might have got him. That means he has to have three. Let's call it. Yep. Got him. Just zap him? No, I can't just kill everybody. I have to be... I have to win diplomatically, whatever this is. Listen, you couldn't let me win, could you? Why are we starting at three? Why are we starting at three? Look, oh, he started at two? What are you doing? Three ones. He definitely has at least one one. Call it. Three... Okay, so that means I have one. Don't call it. Oh, shit, okay. But does he have a... Do you have four fours? No, you don't. Alright, we're getting our money back. Okay. So we're going to do... Uh, open with... Uh, what do I not have? Right? Okay, so let's do one. I'll start with one. No. The two, two, uh, two threes. Two fours. Okay. Th 
Three ones. He definitely has them on. I wonder what he has. I'm gonna say four because he might. He, he probably has two. Well, okay, that's that would be an insane hand if he had if he had three fours, which would be ridiculous. And he does. Nope. Oh, thank God. Okay, I got it. So you've been to Vlada before? No. Are you a regular? Okay, so he only has two dice, so that's one, three. Okay, so let's say, uh, two. Or, uh, two threes. Which makes it physically impossible. You have lost. The game is over. Well, one more round, but it's it's almost it's almost a ninety eight percent chance that he loses. Okay, so I got a one uh, one f one f five two threes three threes. I have one. He probably has. no. I have two. Yeah, sorry, buddy. That's not possible. You lose. <laughs> All right, with a hearty laugh, the innkeeper hands over 10 chips. You now have 24. All right, I'm back to where I was. I have, I'm back to my, where I started with. Change table. In the hall. More food and snacks. The sailor buys a snack. Pick an opponent. Should I play the sailor? I'm going to play the sailor. This is for five, I think, right? Oh, this is a, sh this is a short game. Okay. Tips use hat, puffs his pipe. Yoy ain goid? What? You join the swarthy sailor at the table. He tips his hat to you and puffs his pipe. Yoy ain goid? He asks. You merely nod and reply. Okay. <laughs> what did he say? Let's start. Alright, so I got two, uh... Two twos. Okay. Really? So that means you might you must be well let's say three then. Call it. Okay. Do we both have two? That's the call. Yeah, you're full of shit. God damn it, we both had two. That's unlucky. Yoin Latkaro Sock? Yoin Latkaro Sock. I don't know. One, three. I mean, this would be accurate. So let's see if he does three. Okay, there's no... Do you do you seriously have two again? Bullshit. Yeah, okay. Back to even. Let's start with... Uh, one... One, three. Two threes, okay? That's... You're full of shit? You had to have had them both. Because I'm a liar. <laughs> I'm a liar. What are you going to go with? One, five. 
Two fives. Oh, sorry, four. That's impossible. I take your money. Continue. You take his last die away, winning the game. With a frown, the sailor hands over five chips. You now have 29. He gets up and swearing colorfully, he marched out of the hall to find something to drink. Okay. So now let's go play the old man. A pious looking monk steps into the hall, looks about and then sits down at the 10 chip table. A creature with only one eye gets up sobbing and runs out of the hall. It seems it has lost the other eye in a bet. Let's watch. Once again, you spectate. In the corner of the room, you notice a gnome who rushes in through a crack in the wall, steals something from one player's pocket, then is gone again. Nearby, on the tables with a 10-chip bed, the innkeeper and the monk have just finished a game. The innkeeper shifts down to the five-stake table. Follow the gnome. <laughs> Should we go after the gnome? I think we run after the gnome. Why not? What did he? We don't know what he stole. You dash after the gnome, curious to see what he has stolen. The crack in the wall leads to a path that heads out through a wasted area of fallen down buildings. You lose sight of the gnome amongst the rubble. What? Oh, I'm fucking dead. This is a narrow dirt track that dodges around piles of rubble on either side of the street. It looks as though a gigantic boulder has rolled down the path, crushing everything in its wake. Even the pebbles underfoot have been ground to a fine dust. There's no sign of the gnome at all. A few blueberries grow by the side of the track. Look at the berry plant. Kneeling down by the plant, you look more closely at the blueberries. They seem perfectly ripe and glisten with juiciness. But you do not recognize them. Smell it. You lean in close and take a deep breath from the plant. They smell sweet and rich and quite enticing. Pick a handful. You gather a handful of berries. A few are squashed in your palm as you pick them, coating your hand with dark blue juice. Taste them. You shove a handful of berries into your mouth. The taste is sweet, almost sickly. A moment later, that is exactly how you feel. And you look down to see your hands are turning blue. Your breath is short and your lungs, you are suffocating from the inside out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna stick my fingers down my throat. Thinking quickly, you stick your fingers down your throat, causing yourself to be violently ill. You make a terrible blue mess all over the ground. But at least you can breathe again. You gather your strength. Then get back to your feet. You leave the deadly berries and move along. How do I? I gotta. Ca how do I cash out? I have chips. Do I? Have, how many chips do I have? <laughs> I don't have any money. I have twenty-nine gambling chips. Uh, maybe I can, maybe I can cash him in. Go back and rewind. How many do I have left? 29 cryptocurrencies. <laughs> the gnome berry wasn't worth it. Rewind. How many do I have? Two? Um, I don't know. Okay, I'll rewind. So it was not here. It was here, right? Not the track. It was right after this. Right here, right? Right here. Okay. All right, I'll use it. I'll use it. Cause I have to. Ca I can't just. I have thirty gold. All right, I'm gonna. I'm gonna cash up.
I've, I got 29 chips. Or should I just play against the old, play the monk? Pick an opponent. The monk seems to be on a winning streak. Alright, we're gonna go play the monk. The monk hands you your dice and waves you to bid. Oh, it's a two game? That's it? Uh oh. Oh! I think we just start right off with two. Right? Because then he'll be like, oh shit. Do I just start right off with two ones? Or should I just do one one? If I do one one, then he says two ones, then he's going to be like, hey, I got a one. Or do one, like, one five or something, one three. I'll do one one. Two. Uh, call that. That means, no, wait. That's a lie. It wasn't a lie. Fuck. One, one. Two ones. I got a one, two, buddy. Fuck. No! <laughs> That's the game. You lose. Furious. You give... You were made at the table. What? No. Five. All right. This is dead. This one's better. This is easy to win. Look at this. I got three here. Let's just start with it. Let's start with, like, two... Something I don't have. Let's go fucking three... Three twos, you know what I mean? Three... Three twos! Four twos? Oh. Like you have three of them. Idiot. You have to have... You have to have... Four. Like, there's no way, right? There's no way that you have three again. No, there's no way. Yeah, this, I was going to say, did I get twice in a row? Get out of here. Give me my ten gold. Maybe... Alright, good start. Let's go with like one five, one four. I always can't see that as five because of regular dice. Two fives, okay. Hey. What well, three ones? Call it. There's no way. What an idiot. What a bad play that was. Okay, four ones? You might have. Five ones. You definitely have two ones. You would not have bet that if you didn't. Yeah! I've always wanted to come here. This is where the best players in Kare come to play. That's right. You're looking at one right now. Okay. I've got... Let's go with... Let's do something wacky here. Yeah, two ones. Two threes. Three threes. Call it. Call it. Four. Oh. Really? No, you don't.
Hmm. Two fours. Three four. All right. So you probably you have three fours. Wait. Don't call that. <laughs> You're gonna have two, aren't you? Yes, I win. <laughs> so what? You got two. Uh, one dice left, right? How many dice does she have left? Yeah, two. Okay, so one, two. Two twos. Three twos. <laughs> no. I just got played. Actually, a good... I almost got in trouble there. Uh, there is one... There are, there's one... Uh, one, one. Two ones. Done. All right, we're back to even. We're good. With a frown, the, the beggar girl hands over 10 chips. You now have 29. All right, all right, let's get out of here. Cash out. You had enough of your turn to cash your chips at the booth. Yeah, cash out. I'm done. I, I made five dollars. 29 gold pieces. I see you've come out a winner. Reply with a smile. Ugh. You had one coin profit. No, I bought food in there. Okay, here we go. Still have plenty of ground to cover. Uh, Alright, we're going to go up or down. Well, by the way, this is up. This is... Oh, it's a daisy. Uh, hold on a second here. Where am I? Right, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Uh, up or down? Down takes us through here. This, uh, this is down. Down here. Up heads through this square. We were here before. We were here before. We were, this is where we were, and then we could have gone up through this square. But we were up here before, although we might be able to go through a different uh, alley here. So we're going to go up or down. That is what the pole is. Up or down. I'll give you a big view. This is what you can look forward to going this way. Or potentially this way. A few places to go. Looks like we can go like this. Or like this. Or this. If I go follow that gnome again. Or this. But that's not part of your choice. Uh, it's close, but it's not too close, so... That's pretty, that's pretty much it. 70% say go down. So we're going to go down. Thank you for voting. Let's go. Okay, you follow, whoa, that's a lot. You follow the road around the side of the gambling hall to a wide open space. Laid out for a market. There are several stalls, all selling the same goods. There are traders arguing loudly over who has the cheapest or best quality. Uh, provisions, weapons... Useful gear, magic items, the well. Okay, well, I got I got money, so we need to buy food. It's important. Browsing the stalls, you find that food is reasonably expensive, with the cheapest provisions being sold at three gold pieces each. One trader is also selling a wrapped package of six meals for 15 gold. What's that come out to be? That's a great deal. That's a really good deal. 
save like three gold, right? But I don't. But what if I run out of money? Don't buy food. You turn the trader uh, down the trader and move through the market. I think I can come back. Uh, let me see what else is here. Let's browse the weapons. You take a turn about the armorer's stalls. Mostly what is on sale is of poor quality or weaker than the blade you carry already. But two things catch your eye. A hefty broadsword with a good solid grip and a bow with a quiver of silver-tipped arrows. A bow? You lift the bow and test the string. It seems firm and responsive, and although you have little use for ranged weapons, this one seems hardy enough. The quiver is interesting. It contains ten arrows, but each has a tip made, not of steel, but pure silver. The armorer nods at you significantly as you discover this. Well, you know what? Uh, no. The dead. Only silver can pierce the hearts of the dead. And he adds in a whisper, Six gold pieces. I, I mean, silver arrows. I'm buying it. I'd like the bow, you tell the armorer. He makes a great fuss of packaging it up, but eventually hands over the bow in the quiver. You pay him six gold pieces. Okay. What about the broadsword? You lift the broadsword and move your microphone up a little uh, closer to your face so you get that more podcast-style storytelling voice. Perfectly balanced, uh, enthused the sword maker. Not an antique either, but made of brand new. Uh, eight gold pieces. Eh. Okay, I don't need it. Eight gold? No thanks. That's too much. I'm moving on. You found a clue. Oh, because of the silver. Shit, do I, do I lose my opportunity to buy food? Um, it's okay. I've already eaten. Alright, we're gonna browse magic items. You scour the market for items that might be useful to you in magic, but find nothing except for one jeweler's stand, which, in amongst a lot of very expensive and overpriced jewelry, is offering a sun jewel for sale at the exorbitant price of 15 gold. I already have a sun jewel. I already got it. The trader's sun jewel is as beautiful as your own, perhaps even slightly more polished. I don't need it. No. Fuck off. You point out the jewel. A nice piece, but a fake. In lower car, eh, these cost 10. I'll give you 10. A nice piece, but a fake. Wait, because I have one. That's a fake. The jeweler laughs softly and pointedly removes the jewel from your hands. It most certainly is not fake. But if you cannot see that, then I do not think you are the correct buyer for this exquisite piece. You take one last look at the sun jewel, sigh, and leave it, walking back into the market. Mine is fake. <laughs> is mine the fake? You browse around stalls selling useful gear and items for travelers, and come across tooth ring. They're, you know, they look useful. The first thing is a tinder box for lighting fires. Though it will not work without tinder. And the second is a bottle of snake bite antidote. The tinder box costs two, and the antidote three. I'll take them both. You pay five gold pieces, take both items. You thank the trader and move off into the market. Alright, I got a ton of stuff. You're definitely going to get bitten by a snake at some point, yeah. I got a snake antidote. Okay. Um, so we can go down, or it's giving us the opportunity to go up again. But you guys did not choose up. You chose down, so we're going to continue to go down. That That is what was decided. You guys did not say down then up. 
you said down. By the well. Beyond the market is a street of tall, iron-fenced houses. You're entering a rich district, built in relative safety close to the wall, on the highest point of the land in the city. Few creatures live here, and it would seem that beggars are not tolerated. The streets are empty, and for the first time, clean. You pass a well with a pulley attachment built above it, but no rope. You flick a coin into the well and wait for several seconds before you hear the plop as it hits the water. The well is clearly very deep. Suddenly, from below, you hear a woman's voice singing. Throw down one more coin for me. Two wishes will I grant for thee. <laughs> Throw a fucking fireball in the well. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, read minds. Dud. <laughs> this dump. Dump a but That would be insane. Imagine that. Like, I'll throw another coin down for me. Hey, hey, you can take the whole crate. That's funny. All right, you can do that. Mud? Create quick. Wait, I'm going to fill the well with quicksand and, like, drown the lady? Protect from magic. <laughs> uh, throw down another coin for me. One more for a wish for thee. Yeah, back it up right here. Back, yeah. Now pour the cement in there. <laughs> That's fucked up. Um, I don't know what to do. These are all kind of funny. I mean, sauce makes sense. Dud is funny too. Let's do Dud. You cast the spell, creating a mountain of gold and treasure which you tip into the well piece by piece. The voice inside begins to sing deliriously, giddy with excitement at so much wealth. After a few minutes of this, a hatch opens in the side of the well house, which you had not noticed before. A tiny gnome clamors out. He reaches down into the well, unclips a rope from one side, and attaches it to the pulley, and then begins to haul up the bucket. Uh, what are you doing? You demand, but the gnome appears not to notice you. It seems he is blind, and maybe deaf as well. He continues to wind the pulley until the bucket reaches the surface of the well. All the water inside has drained away through holes in the base, but there's a gold piece. The gnome tips these out. The gnome tips these out into a pouch. Uh What's in the pouch though, right? This is the same gnome that was stealing shit from the casino. It has to be. It's going to be probably 10, 20 gold in there. Or do I wait and see what happens? Watch. With a workmanlike air, the gnome lowers the bucket, clips the rope away once more inside the well, and strolls away up the road. The well begins to sing again. Now I'm ready to work again. One gold piece and I'm your friend. Shit. I want to rewind. Okay. Ask him what he's doing. Okay. The gnome tips these out into a pouch. The gnome has a pouch of money. Grab the pouch. You reach down and snatch the pouch from the gnome who jumps almost out of his skin and then scarpers for cover in the well house once more. In the pouch, you find your gold piece along with a giant's tooth that someone must have thrown in by mistake. We've got two giant's teeth now. Yes. All right. That was worth a rewind. I have two now, right? 
Yep. Okay. Thank God. That was definitely worth a rewind. I'm, I'm out of rewinds, by the way. Whatever. You've reached a wide, desolate area, fenced off by an overgrown iron railing. Inside, tall yew trees reach up to twice the height of the city wall beyond. This is the necropolis, the city of the dead, for those who pass away in Kare with enough money to ensure their bodies are not simply tossed into the water. The road to the north gate passes straight through and offers you no way around. The main path is wide enough for processions and carts, but leading off it are several smaller paths that wind between the trees and headstones to all different suburbs of the graveyard. There are plenty of places for things to hide here. Enter the necropolis. After the hubbub of Upper Kare, the necropolis has a silence which is almost deafening. Either side, listing gravestones crawl with small creatures. No flowers grow here. It is like the bodies give off poison as they rot. Everything here is dead. And yet, this place is neither empty nor still. The graveyard. The wind whistles between the tall trees. The sun is setting behind the wall. Look around. You step nervously off the path and walk between the nearest tomes. Some are ancient, headstones, tilted to crazy angles, and some of them fallen face down, as though the citizens of this graveyard have been drinking since they died. Others are fresh, neatly carved and clean of all moss and weeds. They sparkle in the moonlight, as though cleaned by maids and waiting for their occupants to arrive. Okay. Explore the newer tombs, explore the older tombs, or leave the graveyard. One, two, three. Uh, I will run a poll. One, two, three. Again, one, two, three. One, two, three. What do you want to do? This is, uh, one is newer tombs, two is older tombs, and three is to leave the graveyard. Hmm. <laughs> Where do they want to go? Seems to be pretty, uh, unanimous. Don't say that. We're going to be going to the older tombs. Thank you for voting. Explore the older tombs. You leave the path for the oldest area of the graveyard, in the corner nearest to the city wall. Most of the stones here are now mere rubble. A few statues lie face down in the mud. A tree has split through a carved stone coffin. Search for grave goods? Find the oldest grave or search for grave goods. All right, we're going to find, we're going to look for grave goods. You search between the ancient headstones for any offerings or grave goods left behind. But these tombs are hundreds of years old. No one visits them anymore. And offerings that were left have long since sunk into the clay. Find the oldest grave. You soon find what looks to be the oldest tomb. It is a small mausoleum with a low roof supported by ornately carved pillars. An inscription reads, Here lies Lorag, founder of Kare. Lorag. The tome is a simple stone cabinet carved with the likeness of a man. From centuries of rain and wind, you can make out nothing of it but a long grizzled beard. Below the inscription is a longer tablet, but it is half weathered and covered in moss. Open the tomb. <laughs> Mini F. You know, I actually, this weirdly enough, so I figured out what was going on. 
I didn't really figure it out. It's something to do with the game. Because, have you noticed that when I streamed Multiverses, that not, there was no problems at all? I actually did a test with the game open. Uh, I streamed this with just the, the game open and going it through OBS to the test servers. And I dropped like 10,000 frames and I looked over at my, um, like my internet and there was no drop frames through OBS. It was weird. So something about how this game is captured and I've, I tried to make change a few settings, but yeah, I, I was literally streaming this game to the test servers and dropped 10,000 frames and the internet was up the whole time. It was just up the entire time. And it, it, it was like I was streaming the game to the server, right? So I, it was like, you're dropping a ton of, a ton of frames, 10,000 drop frames. But the Twitch uh, application I use is like, no, there's no drop frames. What are you talking about? So it's something to do with the game. So I apologize for that. Or maybe it's a little bit of both. I don't know. But let's go. Do we even need frames? Antivirus software hates this game for some reason. I, I don't think that should. I don't think that should be the problem. But it's not a big deal. We, you might see it happen once or twice or a few times, but it's a text game, so we should be fine. But yeah, let's go. Okay, so I'm going to. I'm going to examine the man. I did put a frame limiter on this game. I put a uh, to make it so it doesn't have just like that, like 5,000 frames being rendered. So I put a hard frame limiter on the actual application itself, but it seems like it doesn't really help that much. I don't know. Okay, you look closer at the carved man, but notice nothing more. It is just an engraving of an old man in a serene death pose. If this really is the grave of the founder of Kare, the chances are he did not die quite so peacefully. The eyes of the carved statue appear to be watching you. You clear away the dirt from the carved inscription, but you still cannot make out the words. Only trace their outlines with your finger. Make a rubbing. For a rubbing of the inscription, you would need some kind of charcoal to rub with, and you have nothing to do that. We can't do it. All right, are we go? Are we, are we opening this and getting like possessed by the the demon that's in here? Whatever. I mean, we, we we're going in, right? You look for a crack to lever open the lid of the tomb, but find nothing. Presumably, if there was anything here to steal, it would have been long gone already. You head away from the tomb. Fuck, we didn't have the right item for it. And I couldn't do magic. Shit. All right, whatever. All right, we're going to go to the newer tombs. There are several tombs here. There must have been a recent plague on the rich in the city. They're scattered around in roughly alphabetical groups. Explore the tombs of Anagile to Ferret. Explore the tombs of Gyoil to Neferit. Oxil to Tamarin. Ox Oxor to Yiz. Uh, let's start down here. You browse around the tombs looking for a name you recognize, but none of them catch your eye. Something flitters past your face. A bat. <laughs> what was that? Oh, whatever. This is a bat. Who cares? Uh, alright, how about... But wait, 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 wait. Shinva? Right? Maulus? Should we, we should be looking for these names. Korga? Vic? Shouldn't we be looking for these names? Let's do Oxal to Tamarin. You look from one headstone to the other, a few catch your eye, though you cannot immediately say why. Ah ha! Shinva's Mausoleum. You approach Shinva's mausoleum. Carved above its door is Here rests Lord Shinva, fifth noble of Kare. Here we go.
The door to Shinva's mausoleum seems to be unlocked and is a crack ajar, as though someone regularly came and went. Just in front of it is a ring of little mushrooms growing up against the front step of the mausoleum. Hell. Is somebody here? How? Safe passage. Protect from magic. Sense danger. Big. Grow in size. You can just walk around huge. Just do big. Mm, big or sus? What would big? Okay, why would I want to be huge here? I'm gonna do sus. You cast a spell and your mind is filled with a clear sense of danger, rising from the circle of mushrooms in front of you. Presumably they are poisonous, but you would surely not have been tempted to eat them anyway. So, isn't the spell being overly cautious? I definitely would have eaten them. <laughs> look at the ring. You cross down to look at the mushrooms. They look highly poisonous, not least because you cannot see a single insect crawling around or under any of them. Unusually, the ring itself is also perfectly circular in shape. In its center, something silver glints. A stake pushed into the soft soil. Should I take the stake? You reach over to pull out the silver stake, but you cannot reach it without stepping inside the mushroom ring, and your spell warned you against that. But it's a shiny stake. It's shiny metal. Do it anyway. I'm not taking it. It is too cold to stand still in the shadow of the wall. No. Jump over the ring. Um. <laughs> I'm so paranoid without this ring. I'm jumping over the ring. You take a run up and jump clear over the circle of mushrooms, landing on the step of the mausoleum. I'm not walking through that. Nice magpie brain. Okay, Shinva's tomb. The air inside is freezing. Dust coats the floor, urns line the walls, but there is no coffin. The floor space is empty, except for in the far corner where a narrow stone staircase leads down into darkness. Fog. Summon darkness. Uh, stop, open doors. Sap, cause depression. Sun, create light. Well, this is not dark. What else can I do? All float in the air. Okay, if I, will, will I use the sun jewel? Does it consume it or do I get to keep it? I don't know. That's why I, why I don't want to use it. Cast a spell and the sun jewel in your pack begins to throw and ebb, growing brighter and brighter until it fills the room with a pale but brilliant light that reveals the mausoleum for what it is. Old stone and dust and nothing worse for that. Your spirits soar. Okay. Let's go. Make a move. Skulls peer at you from the walls. Turn and flee. Go downstairs. Unafraid of what you might find below, you make your way towards the stairs. 
but you must have stepped on some kind of switch as behind you you hear a noise and you turn to see the door is swinging shut. <laughs> Try to block it. Run for it. Fuck it. You stay back, not wanting to be crushed by the heavy stone door. It seals with a bang. In the dark. The echo of the slamming door circles the room. Your light forms a pool around your feet. Wait, this door did that? Or this... Wait, what door did that? I don't need the... The ape? Feel the door for catches. It was the entrance door. Yeah, make a move. We're going down the stairs. Maybe there's a way out below. You head for the stairs once more, holding your light out in front of you. I'm not leaving. Downwards. You make your way cautiously down the ancient stairs into the dead earth. The walls are damp and there's a foul smell of decay. The only sound is a dripping coming from somewhere in the depths. Into the crypt. You emerge into a large, dark chamber lit only by the light from your sun jewel. A coffin occupies the center of the room, covered over by dust and spider webs. Let's wait and watch. You hang back, taking a few breaths to ensure the room is silent. That's when you hear the sound. A moan and a rattle of chains coming from inside the coffin. The lid is moving back. Put it, close it! Push it closed. <laughs> it's, it's not like a boiling over a pot of, like, spaghetti. What do, you mean, what do you mean, put the lid on it? What are you talking about? This is like a 5,000-year-old demon person. I'm going to stay back. You hang back watching, and that's when you see the ghostly figure emerging from one of the alcoves in the room. It is a death wraith, wielding a cruel hooked dagger and sliding mercilessly towards you. Death wraiths, like all ghosts, can only be harmed by weapons of silver, but it is quite capable of causing you harm. Thank God I brought the fucking arrows. Attack! What can I do? Hold on. Hot. Fireball. God. Illusion of worship. Oh, I could pretend to be a god. Gak. Fear. Tell. Should I read his mind? I wonder what it's gonna say. Kill, 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 kill. Like, why, I don't, why would I do that? Kin. Summon a replica creature. Kid. Create an illusion. Wall. Invisible wall. Walk is shield. Um, just use the arrows. Tell does not cost stamina. You put on the skull cap and cast the spell, reaching out to find the thoughts of the creature and perhaps learn something to your advantage. But you find nothing. There is nothing and no one alive down here. Only specters, shadows, and death. You, hold on. Attack. You stagger back to clear enough space to ready your weapon. Fire an arrow. Working quickly, you unsling the bow from your back and notch an arrow. The death wraith grins with abhorrent glee until you let fly and the arrow strikes it in the arm. It howls with pain, shocked and angered at being hurt. Again. 
What follows is a terrible fight. With every arrow you fire, the death rate staggers back. But as you reload the bow, it creeps nearer again, slashing at you with its knife. As the quiver starts to run low, you know each arrow counts and should, and should even one miss, then Shinva's tomb will become your own. As you reach for your last arrow, the death rate beams with glee. It is weakened, but still not defeated. Fire the last arrow. You fire the last arrow, aiming directly for the Death Wraith's heart. The bolt flies true, and the silver arrowhead buries itself deeply into the Spectre's being. It begins to flicker and fade, and then, with a last, tortured gasp, it slumps to the floor, and through it, melting away into the cold stone. The crypt becomes peaceful as the battle ends, but then there is a creaking sound that makes you look back at the coffin. It has opened, and a figure is rising up. You watch as the figure takes shape, a very old man and no monster. Stranger, I am in a great debt to you. Now at last, I can die in peace. Tell me quickly before I am lost. How may I repay you? You stare in amazement. This must be the fifth noble, Lord Shinva himself. You step forward to greet the apparition. Oh, this is important. You are Lord Shinva. I have come to find out about the North Gate. I'm looking for the first noble. I require nothing of yours. I've come to find ab out about the North Gate. You come looking in a strange place, then. The only gate down here leads to the underworld, and I have been denied it for a very long time. But you... <laughs> oh, no. Um... Are you Lord Shin? Fuck, what a terrible thing. What do you mean nothing? You are Lord Shinva. I'm looking for the first note. Wait, hold on. Don't move. Let me look at my notebook. He's just like, hey. He's just disintegrating and I'm like flipping through my notes. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Um, uh, the first noble is uh, Sansas. And um, Lord Shitfuck. What do you mean, Lord shit fuck? Okay, only Lord Sansas knows the whole thing. <laughs> yes, it's me, Lord shit fuck. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'm looking for the first noble of the city. I'm looking for the first noble of the city. That I hope your mission is to kill him. The first noble will bring this city to wreck and ruin. If that has not happened already while I have been down here. Tell me. <laughs> Does Kare still stand? Nah, dude, it's fucked. Shit got fucked up like 20 years ago. Does it still stand? Should I say for now? I feel like that's like, hey, give me some info. Or should I be like, it's fucked up. It's over. I don't know what to say. I, yeah, I need a poll. I actually don't know which one of the, what does what. So one, two, or three. One, two, or three. One, two, three. Because he's crumbling right now. I don't know. Give him peace? Yeah, what I have to say is, no, and it's all your fault. And he's like, no, 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 it can't be. Okay, one, two, or three. This will be quick. That would be wicked fucked up. 
Yeah, it would be. All he has to do is just turn around and just open the window behind him and look out and be like, It's fine. How dare you? All right. For now. Everyone's saying for now. For now. For now. For, all right. All right. All right. All right. For now. For now. He nods. You shall see what follows, perhaps. I will not. I met a fortune teller once. A woman named Cerisi. And she showed me how Sansus would bring the city of fire and destruction. It was this knowledge that led to my fate, of course. Such is the way of fortunes. Trickles of dust rain down from the roof of the crypt. But you are Lord Shinva. I am, or I was, once the fifth noble of the city, would you believe? <sighs> And you? Who are you? Uh, I'm a stranger. I'm from Analand. Shinva raises a dusty eyebrow. Analand? What interest does Analand have in the ways of Kari? Hmm. I travel to the backlands. I see. So you need to pass through the North Gate. And for that, you must know the spell. Perhaps you know it already. No, no. Do you know it? I Tell me it. Do you know what it is? No, I don't know it. Or should I say, do you know it? Do you know it? I know one line. One lock made of Gollum's hide. I wish you luck finding the others. But tell me. What lies in the backlands that Anilan could want? I explore for myself. Mampang and the crown of kings. I mean, this guy's about to disappear. Thanks for the line. I got what I wanted. I'm here for the crown of kings. The crown? What of the crown? It has been stolen. <gasps> oh. Then today is a good day to die. The crown of kings is an ancient object, you understand. From a time when the world was young and great forces stalked the land. Forces too great for such as we are today. Powers that could shape beings and minds with the slightest whim and mold the land and see to their will. Do you understand what the crown does? It provides influence. It allows control. It is nothing, just a symbol. Um, it provides, I think it provides influence. It provides control. Dead guy voice. <laughs> Influencer crown. <laughs> it provides influence. It provides influence. Much more than that. Only once was I in the power of the crown. As it passed from Lendeland to Bryce. I was an envoy at the court when it arrived. It has the power to turn your will to another's without you knowing what is happening. You see the power of that? No one under the influence of the crown can ever revolt. As they do not understand that they are in servitude. What can you tell me of the backlands? Very little. Oh, but I remember one couplet told to me in my crib. Will you hear it? Yes, please tell me. For sleeping of the sleepless ram, seek out the one they call the sham. Shinva shakes his ancient head. I could not tell you what the sleepless ram is, but perhaps it's advice and not mere nonsense. Your light flickers for a moment, threatening to plunge you into darkness. Farewell, old man. Farewell, stranger. May your life and fate be better than mine. The spell lines you have found are listed in the keys section of your inventory. Finally, with a withered finger, he directs your attention to a gnarled rope that hangs down in one corner of the room. That controls the trap on the door. <laughs> Uh, 
and he's gone. R.I.P. Shit fuck. <laughs> That's just Bugleberry. No, it's, they're different. You slash the rope with your sword. A heavy counterweight falls and shatters to the floor. Lord Shinva nods. Wait, he's not. He's still here. Lord Shinva nods and drifts towards his coffin. I give the last of my life to you. <sighs> you feel a cold strength flood your veins. Then turn quickly and make your way upstairs. Nice. The door at the far end of the mausoleum is open. Step outside. You return through the open door to the path, still shivering from your meeting with a ghost. So hold on. Do I, where, where's my slave Victor vs. Noble Northgate spell? Do I have this like the, the spell anywhere? Or is it just the clues? Some keys. Okay, that's Shinva's line. One lock made of Gollum's hide. I have a bunch of other clues too. So I need three more. We have enough, we have a lot of clues for the other ones, I think. You avoid the ring of mushrooms as you leave. Outside, night is falling and things are stirring between the moaning trees. You would do well not to linger here. Something scurries across your foot and is gone. All right, we're up this way. Uh, leaving the graveyard. You return to the path gratefully and make your way to the far side of the graveyard. Beside the gate is a Disused well, perhaps once used to draw water to wash the bodies before internment. Look down. You lean over the side of the well house to peer down. It's pitch black, of course, and seems to go down forever. Then for a moment, it looks as though there is something in the shaft. But a moment later, it is gone. A trick of the moonlight, perhaps. Pull the bucket up. You turn the winch on the side of the well, drawing up the bucket from beneath. It comes to the top filled with clear water. Is this as fresh as the water from the other fountain you tried? Drink. You scoop a handful of water and taste it. Despite your, despite your surroundings, it is fresh and quite clear. You, I got 20 health. Throw a coin in. You toss a gold piece in. It falls for a long while, and then you hear a distant, tiny splash. The rear gate of the graveyard hangs from its hinges, but not from age. It seems it has been taken apart, maybe widened even to let something through. Beyond is a deep forest. When's green screen movie night part two? Saturday. Saturday this weekend. We're going to do it again. This Saturday. Yep, 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 yep. Green screen part two. All right, let's keep moving. Should be another one to 130, 150 videos. You walk for half an hour through thick trees along a narrowing track until you reach a fork in the road. To the left, the track gets narrower still. To the right, a massive shadow looms. So large, it seems as though a colossus has seated itself on the wall and thought. A chill wind blows through you, as though ghosts walked back and forth this way. The shadowy thing to the right has a jagged silhouette. It's a ziggurat, with perhaps a hundred steps leading to its apex. The trees whisper and move. Looking left, you see distant flicker torchlight through the trees. The north gate, perhaps. Night is drawing in. You should get moving. Things whisper between the tweeds. The ziggurat or the road to the gate. One, 
or two? Let's get a poll going for one or two. One, two. One leads up to the gate. Two goes into the ziggurat. One, two. Two for the tiger mount. I don't know what that's a reference to. Is that a wild WoW reference? All right, we're going to. Thanks for voting. The ziggurat. You stand at the base of a towering ziggurat built from carved stone blocks, each the size of a hay bale. The temple rises higher than the city wall and positioned to catch the first star of evening at its uppermost point. A moment which has just passed. Look for an opening. You tilt your head back, looking for an opening, and finally make one out. A small black dot, about a third of the way up, but even that is quite some climb. For the less devoted worshippers, a small gargoyle by the steps has an open mouth, ready to accept offerings. Climb up or look at the gargoyle. The gargoyle is carved in the shape of a small but spiky dog with long claws, sharp horns, and a pointy beard. Its mouth is wide open and its tongue lolls out with a coin-shaped slot at the back of its throat. <laughs> you need to attack the tail. Okay, so, drop in a gold piece. You slide a gold piece into the gargoyle's mouth. For a moment, nothing happens. Then it appears to swallow. And next, it opens its stone eyelids to reveal two crisp and beautiful eyes. Look into the eyes. Looking into the gargoyle's eyes fills you with a sense of calm and peace. The eyes close after a moment, but the sense of well-being remains. Or did you just imagine that the gargoyle moved? Oh. What should I do? Climb? Make a move. Make a move. You have a healthy fear of Kari's weirder gods. You return to the fork. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I wanted. That is not what I wanted. Let's do everything the same way I did it. Okay. Climb up. You begin the climb, hauling yourself up the first step. Either this ziggurat was built for giants, or ascending is an act of devotion. The next few steps are equally exhausting. You have to throw your pack up first and follow. I think I remember doing this last time. <laughs> Zen. Hover. Yeah, I think I, I remember doing this. Sun to create light. Yeah, we can do big. And just, yeah, we can do big. Oh, uh, sauce is good. Is there too? What else? How is interesting. Safe passage. Float in the air is a good one. Are they, is, are they both one? Yeah, I, I remember doing big before. Let's do it. You cast a spell, swelling to three times your size. You are now able to run up the stairs. But the scale quickly changes. It seems the builders of the pyramid created an optical illusion, and the later steps are not as high as the lower ones. The change is so gradual that you hardly notice as the spell fades. You reach a halfway point almost as high as the city wall beyond, and pause to rest. Halfway up. You're halfway up. Freezes of gargoyles and polished metals ring the temple on this level. Look at the view. You pause to take the in the view. From this side of the ziggurat, you can see nothing but the top of the wall 
and beyond the gleaming darkness of the marshes of the backlands. Walk around to the north, walk around to the north. You move around to the north face. You can see the path ahead running straight between wild and overgrown trees. It seems very few people come this way anymore. The north gate itself is now visible, however, and appears deserted. Then you notice a point of light. A torch has been lit between the trees. Watch the torches. You watch as the torches move through the trees towards the path. They're making slow progress, but they are moving towards the graveyard and presumably from there on into town. The wind claws at you, trying to pull you to earth. Hmm. Um, I haven't eaten. But I only have one provision. I'll eat it. At least away from the rats and night foxes that live on the ground, you're free to eat. You take out the last of your cheese and I still have cheese? You still, I still have cheese from like three months ago. However long it's been. Okay. Um, let's go higher. You continue the weary climb to the first level of the ziggurat by the opening. You climb for another 20 minutes up the steep stone steps until you are gasping and panting for breath once more. But finally, you reach the dark opening that you saw from the base of the temple. The steps themselves continue up a little further still to the very peak of the temple. The opening is guarded by rock-sculpted images of unimaginable creatures. Beyond, you see a long, dark hallway with something large and gleaming at the far end. Treasure. I mean... <clears throat> you step into the temple, the hollow space amplifies your footsteps, and they echo eerily for several moments. On the floor, in gilt inlay, is written the name of the god who inhabits this space. It seems that this ziggurat is of Korga the Gracious. Oh, wait, I have something on Korga. Korga's three eyes. The ritual of Korga involves his three eyes. The left eye, right eye, and the third eye in his forehead. Is that it? I think I remember this. Yeah, I remember this. I forget. I forget everything. Okay, let's wait. You wait for a few heartbeats to see if you have disturbed anything. Nothing happens. Then you catch the tail of a gigantic snake slithering across the floor and disappearing into a crack in one wall. From the markings along its back, it's highly poisonous. Drink my snake antidote. I didn't get bit yet. Why would I drink the antidote? I didn't get bit. Drink the antidote? Why would I drink it now? I haven't gotten bit yet. Free antidote. Let's go. Oh, shit. You enter the temple, but the snake still manages to catch you by surprise, launching itself from a crack in the ceiling behind you. Uh. Alright, we're going like eight. Oh, come on. Temple snake snaps and hisses in the air between you. You swing out wildly, hoping to chop it in two, as it slivers away into a round a pillar out of reach. It lifts up, bearing its mighty fangs, dripping with poison. Oh, fuck you. You drop into a crouch. The temple snake strikes. You desperately defend yourself against its poison-soaked fangs. You fall badly as you stagger back. It hisses from the darkness. All right. So it just it went full blast. We're going to go like two. Like, two point, yeah. Good. Now we go full blast. It spits in the gloom. Is it, can I, do you think I can get it? Yep, dead. Temple snake is retreating, but you give chase. 
You cleave the air with your sword. With a weird scream that echoes around the cold stone, the snake dies, its head crashing to the floor. You wipe your sword clean and wait for the violent echoes of the fight to fade away. Then you go further in. The side of the shrine takes your breath away. The walls are decorated with brightly colored murals depicting scenes from the religious mythology of Kare. Fine ornaments and precious metals are set into alcoves around the pews, and rich woven tapestries cover every surface. A cunning trick of architecture catches the wind past the doorway and creates a constant ethereal humming, as though a crowd of monks sat in permanent meditation inside. Leave. Further in. At the far end of the hallway, four large stone gargoyles of winged demons watch over the shrine from mounts high up in the eaves, guarding the altar on which a gigantic idol squats, Korga himself. It is a life-size version of the model of Korga you saw in the abandoned house yesterday. Okay. Steal something. Approach the altar. I'm not going to steal anything. This is the dumb thing to do. This is how you get the wrath of the gods. I'm approaching the altar. You walk up towards the altar across a richly patterned carpet. Something about it gives you pause. Its surface is decorated with wide symbols that seem to deliberate, too deliberate, to be accidental. Walk across, avoid the star shapes, avoid the circles, avoid the spirals, cast a spell. <laughs> you can't, we no. Zen is float. Uh, how would be good, right? So what? What? That's too literal, isn't it? Wouldn't it just say turn around and leave? Yeah, it's gonna say turn around and walk out the door. Remember, how is completely literal. It's just how to find a safe passage is out. It's not gonna be like, oh, the carpet, do this. That no, it's gonna go leave, turn around. Mm. I could float. I'm just gonna float over it. Cast a spell reducing your weight to that of a feather. You should now be safe from any pressure traps. And just go across. Relying on your spell to keep you safe, you step forward, across the carpet towards the idol. But it seems whatever trap is here does not require much weight to be triggered. Something happens, although you cannot be sure what. One moment you're in the Temple of Korga, and the next you are falling. What? What are you talking about? You're floating slowly down through the air, turning and over. You're in pitch blackness. You cannot see a thing. No! I'm in the sewer again. No, 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 no. I Can I rewind? Let me rewind. Can I... Let me rewind, please. I don't have any more rewinds left, but can I just go back? I want to do that! I used them all. Can I go? I want to go do that. Can I go do it? You made your choice up. Okay. Can, all right. Run a poll. Can we get? Can we get a chat's choice rewind? It has to get at least. 50, it has to get at least fifty percent to be yes. It has to be at least fifty percent. That's so easy to get to. All right, I'll make it harder. At least 70%. Save scum. I know, but I want to I want to go do that. Okay, I got like thrown across the whole game. I just went into the air and floated and the the, the god was just like, "No, dude, that's not happening." All right, that's at 76%. Just walk back there. 
Bro, that's so far away. Sure. Can I can I actually get back up there? I don't think I can. I don't I actually don't think I can get back up there. I, I think it's it's gonna be grayed out. I can just keep going. Yeah, do can I actually get back up there when I get out? I don't care. Okay. You cast the spell, and a clear, calm voice enters your mind and informs you that there is indeed a trap in the rug in front of you. But before it can tell you where, a second presence enters your mind. Booming, it declares. Make your choice, worshipper. Korga himself, perhaps. Avoid the stars, the circles, or the spirals. Um... The circles? Avoid the circles? Alright, I'm gonna go avoid the circles. You walk up to the altar, stepping carefully around the circle in the carpet and re- Yeah! Alright, yes! We made it. You stand before the idol, a fat statue set with gems and curious pock-marked features. Above his head is a plaque that bears an inscription. Okay. Read it. It reads, On Korga's face you kiss a cross, and finish with the lips. For answers to your questions, you must err not else he spits. You step nervously up the steps until you are below the great statue. You consider the idol. It is the same as the statuette in the abandoned house, except that had blue dots painted on its two eyes, its third eye in the forehead, and on its lips. Okay, on Korga's face, you kiss a cross and finish with the lips. For answers to your questions, you must err not else he spits. Okay, so don't ask a question because he's going to literally spit in your face. So we need to, uh, on Korga's face, you kiss a cross. Finish, so you do the, you kiss the lips last. You stand on tiptoes and lean in, preparing to kiss the statue, but where? Does the humming in the temple seem to be getting louder? I can pray to the ape. <laughs> Imagine going into another god's temple and putting your hands together and praying to your god. And my god is an ape. This is like an all-powerful, like, super demon god. I have this, I have like a monkey that's just hanging out, looking over a cloud. What, what is the ape going to do here? That's blasphemous. Should I pray to the ape? I'm going to do it for fun. You try a prayer to the ape for guidance, but it seems in the temple of another god, the ape cannot hear you. You're on your own. Oh. Okay. Uh, uh, Alright, it was, it was a cross, right? And then lips last. The ritual of Korga involves his three eyes, left eye, right eye, and the third eye in the forehead. So what, we go left, right, forehead? Left, right, forehead? Left, right, forehead, lips. Or left, forehead, right. Let's go for it. Left eye. Kiss the left eye. First you place a kiss on the idol's left eye. You hear something flittering in the upper levels of the temple. 
kiss the idol's right eye. Next, you kiss the right eye. Kiss the idol's forehead. Kiss the idol's lips. Finally, you lean low and kiss the idol's lips. As you straighten once more, you see the idol's eyes flick open. A soft voice issues from its mouth. Stranger, you are not of my faith, and yet you have completed my ritual. How can that be? I merely read your instructions. I'm lucky. I merely read your instructions. The god laughed softly, graciously. Very well. I see you are modest, if impolite. My reward is to answer one question. But I am the god of grace, and I require my followers to show grace. And you have not. I can see all. Remember, I am a god, and I see that you have committed murder. A red-eye guard. So, I deny you my aid, as you denied others their lives. His voice rises from a gentle whisper to a rolling thunder that echoes around the walls. Now leave, or I will repay you in kind. Uh, but, uh, but you don't understand. Uh, they, they, uh, they were trying to kill me. Uh, they were trying to punch me. And they were attacking me. And they had... They what? Get the ape down here. Oh, yeah? Well, fuck you. I got the ape. What are you going to say to that? <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, Korga. Argue. You deny me my right? You declare. <laughs> I deny you everything. <laughs> and then the idol moves, standing gracefully onto its two bow legs and leans forward. Tag the monkey in. <laughs> Do I run? No, let's fight this motherfucker. I Look, I've got beeswax. I have a, a helmet. I, do I run? What, you can't kill somebody? If you kill people, you can't do this? I, I don't remember this. Freeze. Before you can react, the statue of Korga plants a mechanical kiss on your forehead. You hear the click, but you do not feel the sting of the poison dart as it enters your skin and burrows into your brain. <laughs> Whatever. <sighs> so I just have to leave. I can't. What am I supposed to do? I have to leave. I literally might as well just rewind back to when I was in the sewer. I should have stayed in the sewer. Did I, is there anything else I can do here? Okay. Uh, I am... I've read... I've read your instructions. Oh, you killed people. Oh, I... I, uh, I I'm gonna repay you in kind. Fine. Fuck off. Leave. You don't need a second warning. You turn and hurry out of the temple for the god can get revenge. What a fucking crock of shit. You're back by the opening in the temple. What? I killed a person, so I'm not allowed to have a, a god help me. Go back up. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. I can go to the top. Right, right, right. Let's go up top. All right, climb for the top. You turn back to the steps and climb higher. All the way to the top of the ziggurat. 
Night has fallen, stars spread across the sky in a peaceful repose that bellies their true nature. Warring spirits tussling for control of the world below. Look at the stars. With your head tilted back, you can see more stars than you ever have seen in this city. Perhaps you are above the level of the lights and the smog and the dust. Or perhaps more stars choose to cluster here around this sacred site. If you were a true mage and not a mere sorcerer, who knows what spells one could weave at a spot like this. You lean back and look up, trying to recognize the stars from your studies. Puke. Uh... Tar. Have I learned anything? Have I... Do I have any, any info? Oops. Did I get any info? I might have. I don't know. Zip R Res Z I would have had to have known it. The page at the beginning had C A. That's right. That uh that lady took it, didn't she? Is there a C A here? There's no C. P U per. I know that there's a few combinations you can actually do here, and I am not. I don't. Per is good. This there, I know there's at least three or four you can get from this. Should I do per puke? Should I try per? What does per do? Her. All right, I'm gonna try it. You fashion the stars into alignment, and an enchantment is created. For a moment, nothing seems to happen, and then a screeching noise reaches you from the distance and across the city. It is the sound of a thousand mewling stray cats. It lasts a few minutes and then fades away. You found one of the secret spells of the Temple of Korga. What? I can summon a thousand cats? You look out across the city in the far distance. You see torches in the woods towards the north gate. Looking back, you see the lights of Kare coming on, and the shouts of revelers, drunks, and nighttime thieves. The view is quite run. It's wonderful. But your journey beckons. You start the long climb back down the ziggurat once more. Mm. Let's go. The climb back down is going easier. Halfway down, you pause to rest. You look out to the north. The thick trees are still lit by torchlight. And you hear the distant bang of wolves. Half an hour passes. Nothing changes except the sky grows colder. And the wind picks up, cutting through your cloak. Wait. You settle down to wait on one of the stone steps, watching as the line of torches fans out through the trees and marches slowly forward. As some disappear, new ones are lit. But eventually, after the sun is finally gone and the stars come up above you, the trees around the north gate are inky blank and there is no light except for a single flame on the gate itself. The way through the forest should now be clear. Oh, that was this. That was going this way. Okay. So now, so that I was looking at this. There was a bunch of torches. Right. Okay. 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 Work. The mud underfoot is stamped with footprints, and in between them, the prints of many paws. The road to the gate.
You walk between clawing trees and thick bushes. The north gate is finally in sight. You can see its imposing, ornately carved wooden doors over the top of the guard huts and low buildings that lie at the end of the road. You pause to watch the guard huts. They seem quite still. One has a hole in its roof. Weed grows through the chimney of another. Are they abandoned? But before here and there is a long road, lined by thick and gloomy trees, a patch of wild forest like you haven't seen since the hills. Go cautiously. You make your way slowly forward, trying to ensure your feet do not crunch too loudly on the gravel. Something is keeping pace with you, just behind the tree line, stalking you. Stop and look. You stop and turn to look into the trees. There's the faintest flicker of a gleam. And that's all the warning you get. A wild bristle beast leaps up from the trees and knocks you down. You scramble for the sword. Set uh, right here. Nice. Good start. Do it again. Got it again. Clean. We're going to go again. 2.1. Oops, oops, rewind, rewind. Uh, I think I have enough. Okay, no, that's fine. I have to defend now. Drops its jaw. All right, it's coming in. Oh, fuck off. It's, it's coming in now. I have to defend again. That's fine. Now I go full blast. The bristle beast hunkers down. Got it. Leveling your blade, you strike. Backed up against a tree, you can barely swing your sword, but you muster all of your strength. With a final swing, you bury your blade deep into the bristle beast. It twists on the metal, then curls up like an overheated beetle and dies. The night air falls silent once more. You continue on quickly through the trees. We are at the north gate. You've reached the north gate. The ground before it is wide and clear and lit by blazing torches set into brackets either side of the enormous sealed doors. Should there be archers hiding in the shadows, they would have a clear sight of you. Off to one side is a well, but there's no other cover. You don't know all the spell lines, of course, but perhaps the gate will open to a dop spell after all. Don't have all the spell lines. Uh, I, I will, I will tell you guys. Um, I know what happens when you get to the door, and it is not dop. It does not work. I have one spell line. Um, it'll work. Clueless. It'll work. Huff. I <laughs> just blow it down. This how? No. No, I... Okay. I think... I'm trying to remember how this plays out. I, I know how it plays out, but I don't know how you get there. Um, I'm going to wait. Or I'm going to stride right over to it. Can I do purr? No, the, I can't do purr. Uh, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna walk over to it. Throwing caution to the wind, you step out of the shadows and approach the gate. Time to see if you have learned enough of your travels to go through the city and unlock the gate. You reach the other side of the clearing, unscathed, and stand below the enormous door. Recite the spell. <laughs> something, 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 something. Uh, and the golem has armor. You knock firmly on the door. When there is no response, you call out, I am here to open this gate. There is no response. You begin to wonder if you have been tricked, if there is no gate here at all. And it's simply an illusion painted across a solid stone wall. Suddenly, you are not alone. A phantom voice issues from the wood itself. Oh, stranger, do you know the spell which controls the gate? Uh, uh, no, I do not. 
<laughs> then the gate denies you. From across the clearing, you hear a scrabbling sound of metal moving over stone. You look around but see nothing. Look at the shadows. Look along the track. Look at the well. You look over at the well and catch a flash of moonlight on a metal blade. It is the hooked claw of a grappling hook attached to the edge of the well shaft. As you watch, a face emerges. It bears the leering, hook-tooth smile of a goblin. The creature is climbing a rope with a grappling hook attached, which is hooked over the lip of the well. <laughs> Attack! <laughs> hide. You turn to run, aiming to find somewhere you can hide and watch what unfolds. But then you realize that you are running for your life as goblin after goblin clamors from the well and begins to race across the clearing towards you. There's no way you can fight a hundred goblins, so you dash aside into the shadows. The goblins pour up to the gate. Are they going to try to ram it? But then they stop, and in their midst, a small figure is being propelled forward. You cannot clearly see him, but he is wearing a dull metal circlet on his brow, which he clutches as though it was keeping him safe. Their king, perhaps. But since when have goblins had a king? He is surrounded by a guard of nearby nearly 20 goblins, as though he was indeed precious. Kill the figure. All right, let's go. Whoever this goblin king is, he needs to be stopped. Aww. <laughs> I had a grenade. Just lob a grenade over there. Uh. Yo. What happens here? <laughs> you cast the spell, throwing down a giant's tooth, which erupts into smoke. A moment later, a giant is standing in the middle of the clearing. It grabs a fistful of goblins and tosses them away over the wall, then grabs the goblin king in its fist and raises him up into the air. He looks to you for instructions. Toss him away, crush him, put him down. Crush him. Crush him? Um, should I crush him? No. I can't, but I need to know, who, I need to get info. <laughs> I love that he looks to you for instruction, like, um, well, what do you want me to do with this guy? Put him down? <laughs> put him down, you need to, uh. You should do, put him down. Do a 1v1 PvP. Yeah, I can 1v1 PvP this guy. Think about that. I've got this giant here. All the goblins aren't going to fuck with me now. I'm going to put him down. Put him down. You call, and the giant lowers the king back to the ground. It is enough for his goblin guards to react, and they quickly surround him once more and push you back. More goblins charge the giant, clamoring up him and working in a large group to cut his head from his shoulders. The king, shit, we gotta kill him. The king smiles, holding the circle on his head as if it was a source of some kind of power. And then he hurries to the gate. Leaning down to the lock, he whispers something, but you cannot hear what he says. A moment later, the gate begins to move. It is opening. Run for the open gate. This is your chance to leave the city. You rush forward, chanting fearsome sounding liturgy at the top of your lungs to scare the goblins and clear them aside. You're nearly through when suddenly a great cry goes up from outside the walls. Something is moving out there. Run. You keep pelting madly forward. For once, simply running madly and not waiting to look around. You are almost through the gates when you see what is out there. An army of marsh goblins. Thousands of them fully armed, and stampeding into Kare. Keep going. You try to fight your way forward, but the invading army pushes you back with a force like an oncoming tide that sweeps you off your feet and dumps you on the other side of the clearing. The incoming goblins spill through the gate, filling the clearing and meeting their hill cousins in a loud and violent celebration. The man with the circlet at the gate cries with glee. A new day for Kare begins, he cries, clambering onto the shoulders of a nearby goblin as though about to make a speech. 
Quite suddenly, the goblins that are carrying him let go. He cries out as he falls to the ground. A sword goes up. Slashing down, there is a scream. They have murdered their own king. What is going on here? The circlet from his head rolls to your feet. The goblins, clashing sword on shield, look towards the city with violent eyes. Take the circlet. From the way the king was clutching the circlet, you might have thought it was a thing of power, perhaps akin to the crown of king itself. But it is nothing. Cheap, hammered iron. It still bears the groove from when it was once a goblin sword. You toss it into the dust. Go for the gate. Their attack on Kare is not your concern. Darting forward through the crowd of creatures, you, you head for the open gate and the backlands. You run for the gate, but your progress is slow. Goblins are surging in, and they are starting to organize. One, a leader of some kind, is hoisted up by the others so he can address the crowd. Kare falls here, and every creature dies. Suddenly, the goblins' eyes are turning on you, as if they had not seen you before. One springs forward, but there are a hundred more behind. Shing! You ready your sword. Fuck. The creature rushes towards you. You try to gauge his size and make a play for the creature's chest. The goblin drops back, quivering with fear. Shows his teeth and spits. <laughs> Put him down. I, I haven't gotten over the fact that they cut the giant's head off. That was horrible. That was a lot going on there. Um... <laughs> It's going to crush them. If it, they were going to kill him anyways. They would have been happy. They definitely... It doesn't matter. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. You, you went full blast. We're going to go four. Shit. I'm... Uh, he's not going to go full blast. Got him. We do it again. Fuck! Sorry, do it again. Oh my god! 1.8, 1.9, get out of here with this bullshit. Die! Shameful. Oh god damn it. Okay, alright, 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 alright. Oh, come on! The other one attacked immediately! No! Oh my fucking god. I why? They, I hate the defend, 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 defend. Start over again. I don't care. Kill me. He's, he's, he's going to go full. The goblin hefts its sword, but it looks a little tired. Six? Yeah, all right, that's good. We're good, we're good, we're good. Now we go full blast. I fucking, this, come on. Like, you gotta be shitting me. Really? Oh my god, you beat me by point one. What the fuck? That's such dog shit. That's dog shit. Okay, it stares at your stance. Six. Oh, fuck off. All right, we're doing low. Three. How did you get four? He just did his whole bar. Excuse me? You did your entire bar. What's that? What are you talking about? How did he get the four stamina points? He did his whole bar. Get out of here. Sit the fuck down. More goblins are appearing. I'm gonna run. You cannot keep this up. Wave after wave of goblin is filling. 
the yard. You cannot hope to kill them all with just your sword. You turn and race away into the shadows, then a voice rings out. Stop. There is a better way. You look around, but can see no one. But all around you, something is happening. It is as though the goblins have slowed down. They are warmongering, becoming an absurd, stately dance. The noise in the clearing dulls to a low rumble. I command you to stop. From the smoke of the torches by the gate, a figure emerges. It is an old man with a long beard and deep, black, irised eyes. He paces through the churning goblin army to stand in the open. His legs disappear into a spectral trail. He is at least part wraith. Step forward, he commands, and you find yourself bidden. The goblins seem to part around you like smoke as you approach the figure. I have aligned three stars. Vic rises tonight. The goblins show their hand tonight. But also you. You are here tonight. My name is Lorang. I was once a scholar and a noble of this city. Later, I founded it. You founded it later? Who is this crazed shade? I saw Kare was falling. Sansas had lost his mind and sided with the goblins. Council was in ruins. My life, my own life, was threatened. I saw that Kare needed to be saved. So, I went back to remake it in a way that could be saved. And here we are now. You've been here two days. I've been here hundreds of years, waiting for you to bring me the spell for the gate. Uh, the gate is already open. The goblins opened it. Their leader did. <sighs> the spell does not open the gate. His tone is heavy and dark like tarred timber. The spell controls it, and there are deep magics burned into the wood itself. <laughs> so you sound like Droopy Dog? <laughs> I... Droopy the dog? Burned in... Oh, God damn it. Fuck. I don't care. Burned into the wood itself. Magics that have poisoned this city and burnt fire into the eyeballs of those who live nearby. He stares at you, his coal black eyes expressing no emotion. Deep magics I placed there to be used by you tonight. I am dead. You must act for me. How can I find the spell lines? I tried to find them. They were well, they were too hidden. The lines are known to four nobles. Lord Theta is blind and living in the wastelands of Upper Kari. Lord Malus was a follower of the god Slang. And in his shrine near the docks of Lower Kari, you may learn his line. As for my line, I give it to you freely. Tumblers too sealed deep inside. But there's no more time. It's too late. There is a magic that will give you the time you need. I cast it on myself once and went far back to before this city was built. I found it, Kare. Now you will save it. He waits to let his words sink in. If you will allow me, I will blend time itself so that you may return to the city and find the spell for the gate. So, shall you take the adventure, or will you leave Kare to burn? Understand, I will curse you, and the journey to follow if you do not assist me. You hesitate. Kare is a city of traps, but also of secrets, and there's still more that you might find. Can you afford to let the city burn?
fucked up. This is what happens. If I say, yes, continue the search. We go, boom, and the whole map is reset. We go back to the very beginning. We can then go and pass we did not go and get the actual lines to open the door. We can do that. We can do the whole thing again and we can go find the lines. Or we can just leave Kari. We don't, you don't need the lines. You don't have to get the spell lines. But if you do leave Kare and you say, I don't care, let the place burn, let the goblins kill it, Lorag becomes your god and you can never replace him. And he's a piece of shit. That's what we're dealing with here. Should we try to save the city? Or do we just keep going and say, fuck it, move on? That's spoilers. I mean, it's a pretty important spoiler that if we just leave, we leave. And if we, and that, that's a very important spoiler. But doing, going, rewinding and going back to the beginning. Yeah, means there's more content here, but we do have to play through and find them. And if we don't find them through the second time, if we don't get the other two lines, uh, then we get back here and he's just like, yeah, fuck you. You can't do it. And we just leave and, it, and, it's, and it's over anyways. So, I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Let's put a poll in the chat. By the way, abandoned car. We go on to the third episode. We go on to the third game. So, this is either stay in episode two or move on to episode three. With some repercussions. What do you think? Go back, save the city, get the, uh, go get the spell lines, because we have some clues now. Or just let's go and move on to the next game. We can do it. We can do it. <laughs> okay. Back to the future. We need to get that legendary sword. Did you? What did you do last time? I abandoned Kare last time. That's what I did last time. I just walked through and I said, fuck it, whatever. Uh, and live with the repercussions for the rest of the game. We did not go back and get the lines last time. You, yes, you keep everything. You keep all of your items. You keep all your money. Literally nothing changes besides you go back to the very beginning. Here. Or actually maybe here. I forget where they put you. But then we can use the clues to go and find the two places where we need to find the lines. Because Lorag just gave us his. All right. Yeah, we're going back. All right. Let us go back. Continue the search. I will help you. I thank you. Ready yourself. He raises his arm and begins the spell. The raging goblins stand like statues. You feel yourself lifting up from your body as though you have been snatched away by birdmen. As you lift into the air, you hear Lorag cry out one last piece of advice. Find the lines and find the order of the lines. Kare dwindles beneath you and you feel your body growing weaker. Oh, you get to decide where to go. All right, all right. What are the clues? What are the clues? You were given a clue about the backlands. We're sleeping... Okay, now that's... For the backlands of the next episode. Lord Mollus. Lord Mollus is one of the nobles of Kari, but where is he? Okay, Lord Theta is in the ruins. Lord Theta can be found blind and begging in the ruins of the fallen quarter of the city. Where's the fallen quarter of the city? The fallen quarter. 
What was the other one? The priest at the Shrine of Slang might be able to help you find the spell lines to the gate. The shrine is located between the well and the docks in Lower Kare. So the well and the docks of Lower Kare, which is like here. Or here. Okay. It literally says the well. Well, it's just between the well. Yeah, lower car, right, though. Where are we dropping? Yeah, but where do you want to go first? Should we go to the well? Yeah, it's right here. So we, yes, we get to go back in time. All right, do you get? I guess it really doesn't matter because I th wait, we can go back twice. All right, so we're gonna go here. You ready? We gotta go find who we're we looking for. The Shrine of Slang, located be between the well. We're gonna look for the Shrine of Slang. Go. Or go to the festival? I guess we could go here and go up through the festival if you wanted to see the festival. I have literally one health. Oh, hey, maybe that's something you do in your game. Maybe you do your game. Maybe you go to the, maybe you go do all this. We didn't do any of this. Fallen quarters down here. So we've uh, we would need to start How would we get over here? All right. Whole time. Are we going to do fe like festivals? Festival into the fallen quarter. Or well to go to the shrine. Because I'm imagining there's probably an opportunity for us to go like this. Right? Or even go like this. That's possible too. This just kind of skips us over here and goes wham, and we might be able to go wham, wham. Where do you want to start? The fields or the well? We might, we probably can get both if we go from, yeah, we could probably go or if we start here, we can go right, let me get a poll in chat. I'm going to say well or fields. Where are we going? Oh, it's already... Okay, it's already there. Fields. Well. This does not count as a rewind. It does not. Okay. Okay. It's still not, it's pretty close. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going in, in five seconds. I don't think you, it's, it's still, it's only it's like 200 votes. That's not that much. Okay. That's it. We're going to the fields. Three, two, one. <laughs> that was weird. It was like penis music. You are being wretched in directions you did not know existed. The pain is unbearable. And just when you think you will go mad from it, the forces tear you apart. You struggle to grab onto your belongings and your very self as you tumble down from the clouds. 
and then you are awake. Your eyes open once more. Your surroundings have changed. You wake, click, you wake quickly from sleep. Your journey must continue. There's no time to lose. Following the track for a few minutes, you reach a junction where three roads begin. These are the outskirts of Kare. Huts huddled like beggars on either side of the tracks leading uphill into the city port. Time to choose your road. Somewhere in this city must be the information you need to find the spell lines for the north gate that the innkeeper told you about. Just at that moment, a cart rolls down the road from the right and careens around a corner to take the main track ahead. This time, however, the crates on it wobble but do not fall, and it disappears up the road, leaving nothing behind. Interesting. It seems not everything is fixed after all. Remember when we got the blimberry juice? It's different. It's different. Uh, speaking of that, I need to drink something. I have, I have my, look at my health. I mean, I'm just going to take them both. I need them both. All right, so you guys wanted to go towards the festival, right? Oh shit! I didn't want to do. I didn't want to drink them both. Yeah, I should. I should. That was my mistake. That's a mistake. Rewind. That's a mistake. Rewind. Because I, I can do the dock spell. Okay. Uh, let's head towards the festival. We need to end up in the Fallen Quarter. Or up at, uh, up at the well here. So we've got to find our way up. We're going to go to the festival. You head right along a wide track until you reach a large hut. It is the only building on this path that is still standing. Either side are empty plots. Once, the houses of the farmers who planted the fields to the north. They now collapsed and thick with gripweed. It seems that here, in the shadow of the city wall, is not a place people choose to live. By the side of the door, by the side of the door to the hut is a sign. Delicately painted. Chain maker. The door is just a crack ajar, and from within you hear a gentle tinkling sound. Metal on metal as though a creature in a chainmail dress was endlessly pacing the floor. Listen at the door. You pause a moment longer and listen closely to the door, but there are no voices or footsteps from within, just the sound of the chains. From somewhere further on comes the falling and rising sound of a crowd. Some kind of event is taking place. There are several places you could go next. So we could, uh, we're not going this way. So it's either go into the chain maker, uh, hut, cut through the fields, or walk on the path. Let's go in here. Let's go, let's go, let's go to the chain maker. You push open the hut door and enter. It is dark inside. The floor is sawdust and the air smells of oil, polish, and burnt metal. From the ceiling, hanging like ivy, are metal chains of all lengths and thickness, some suitable for machinery, some for oxen, and others for arms and feet. The chains shift and whisper to themselves. There seems to be no one here. There's another room beyond. Its door is hanging open. Okay. Call out a greeting, search the room, try the far door. <clears throat> Hello, I'm here. BDSM house. Try the far door. Uh, let's get some loot. No shop owner in Kara should leave their wares unattended. To steal from him would be to teach him a lesson. You begin to carefully search the room, trying not to set the chains to rattling. Oh, God. Left wall, under the table, far door, near the door to the shop. I'm going to say near the door to the shop. Searching around near the door to the shop, you find a copper key. It is carefully stashed into a crack in the wall, a 
as though secret and valuable. It is far too small to be the key to the shop door. You take it and put it in your pack. Nice. Nice. Um, under the table? Or just stop? I'm gonna get caught. Why am I doing the same thing I did earlier? I never went, I didn't go down here. You mean the place where I, the, from like five years ago? Did I do the same thing? We, we haven't been here in this playthrough. Search along the wall. As you move across the room, you stumble clumsily into a chain and it begins to swing, hitting other chains on either side. The far door opens and a Svin, a man orc from Torapani, appears, and it looks like he is angry. The chainmaker growls fiercely and snatches up a particularly heavy length of metal, holding it like it was a thread. Talk my way out of this. <laughs> what can we do? Sharpened blade. I mean, I could throw a fireball at the guy. Fix? Cause fixedness. Oh. Mud, quicksand. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk my way out of it. I'm gonna talk my way out of it. I don't I don't have enough look at my stamina. I'm not stealing from you, you reply calmly. I called out, but you didn't hear me. I heard nothing. Exactly. The chainmaker stops and thinks about this. I understand. All right. You want change? <laughs> it worked. Look for a chain to buy. He's worthless. All right. What, what do you got? You look around the shop at chain after unremarkable chain. Then one stands out. A short length of silver, which seems to move more energetically than the one swaying on either side. The chainmaker nods. Good chain. Magic chain. What does it do? Magic. Uh, how much does it cost? He sizes you up thinking you must be wealthy. It's five gold pieces. I'll take it. I'll buy it. You hand over the five gold pieces he wants, happy that... Three of those five pieces are his anyway. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. You shake the chain maker's hand and take the chain. It is clearly enchanted. The ends seem to snap and bite at one another like a snake. Uh, good for taking out their knees. Okay. Is this a weapon? It is a weapon. Really? That's kind of, all right. That's cool. We have a chain as a weapon now. Okay. Uh, should I cut through the field or should I just walk on the road? I'm gonna walk on the road, right? I, I don't have enough health to like step on a beehive or land in a trap or something. I'm gonna take the road. You continue along the road. The land rises gently, a thin, meager scrub broken by rocky outcrops like teeth through an infant's gum. Goats roam the slopes, paranoid, shifty creatures who flee at the sound of your footsteps. Suddenly, you could be back in the fields outside Cristantanti. This part of the city port is barely habited, so you are unlikely to find clues to the Northgate spell here. There will be more people to talk to near the docks. You continue walking along the track, and begin to hear the sound of a large crowd up ahead. There's some kind of market or fair happening further on near the river. 
You pass a dirt track on the left that leads away across the field. Yeah, we'll head right. If you guys wanted to, we wanted to do the festival, we're going to do the festival. Into the crowd. You continue along the road towards the noise. After a few minutes, you are walking between tall poles and rippling colored flags. People and creatures sprawl across the path and several tents have been erected. The poles join together by more flags. You ease your way into the edge of the gathered crowd. It looks all good, spirited, and fun. And with so many people here, perhaps you will pick up useful information about the spell lines. Listen. You mill through the crowd, keeping your ears open for anything interesting. But most people in the center of the field are arguing over where to go next, or lamenting how many gold pieces they have spent. You might do better to have a closer look at something. Okay, this is through the end of the midway. <laughs> you walk to the south end of the fairground midway. A boy with a barrel stands off to one side. There are more exciting stalls further north. Barrel boy or in the middle of the midway. I mean, barrel boy, right? You approach a boy standing by a barrel and looking sheepish. Uh, what are you selling? The boy points into his barrel, but doesn't answer. Look in the barrel. You peer into the barrel. It is full of small, hard apples. Most are blackened by disease, or else are shot through with maggot holes. Your apples are all rotten. The boy shakes his head, then picks one up from the barrel. He squeezes it hard in his fist, but nothing happens. Then he drops it sharply back into the bucket. Uh... Um, why don't you speak? The boy shrugs, but doesn't seem to want to answer properly. How much is an apple? You ask, despite the fact that it's hard to imagine anyone paying for one. The boy holds up a single finger with one hand and all five fingers of the other. One gold for five apples. The boy nods. <laughs> Five? I'll take it. You hand over a gold piece and the boy supplies you with five apples. In your hands, you feel that they are indeed not rotten. In fact, they are rock solid, hardened by some disease into stones. The boy bows his head in thanks and then gestures behind him. A girl, possibly his sister, pops up from behind another barrel and pulls a face at you. Throw an apple at her. Like, I just full baseball pitcher throw this into this girl's face? Why would I do that? That's horrible. I'm going to cause mayhem if I do that. You know that, right? Stick my tongue out. Yeah, I'm going to go... Mm, mm. Guys, I'm not baseball throwing a rock at a little girl's head. I'm sorry. You, you have a playthrough? You can do that in your playthrough. That's not happening here. I, I am not going to full baseball pitcher from the mound throw one foot away from me a rock into at, a, at, some, at some girl. I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. You did it last time. Mm. You stick your tongue out. The girl giggles and then dodges behind the barrel. The boy looks at you expectantly. The girl peeks up again. <laughs> I'm waiting for her head to peek up. Is that your sister? You ask, pointing the girl's direction. The boy nods and then takes an apple from his barrel and throws it across the field. His sister dodges quickly out of the way. You lob one of your apples at the girl, but she dives to one side and it misses. The boy claps his hands. The girl sticks her arms out at either side, then quickly ducks. You ready your second apple and wait for the girl to show herself. 
As soon as she pops up, you throw, but your aim is off and you miss by a finger's breadth. The girl giggles and ducks away out of sight. <sighs> I, I've, I, 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 I didn't mean to do that. I was trying to throw it again. I can I rewind? I fucked up. It's waste. I'm wasting apples. I'm. I, I want all five apples. <laughs> Wait, I toss them all into the mud. You walk away as you go. You try biting into an apple and almost crack one of your teeth. They're completely inedible. You toss all of them into the mud. What? No, go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Six gold pieces. One piece for five apples. Okay. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Stick my tongue out. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. Throw. Throw another. Okay, throw another. You try another throw, but your aim is really terrible. Perhaps if you spent more time practicing your sword fighting and physical skills and less learning book magic, your arm would be better. Your hand, you hand back your remaining blackened apples to the boy. He grabs the apples and throws them at his sister, and you walk back into the midway. What? The fair spreads out all around you. A collection of booths and... What, I, I, is that a... Like a strength check? I don't get it. I just wasted a dollar. There's just a hint of violence in an atmosphere of cheerfulness. What? <sighs> all those fancy books. All right, into the midway. <laughs> you push your way through the crowds to the very heart of the fair and look around at the attractions to offer. A beer tent. The dancing bear. Let's go in the beer tent. Just by the river is a low tent surrounded by several stumbling figures. It could almost be a tent for dancing except for the strong smell of brewed grain that drifts over the air. In the stall, a group of three half-goblin women are pouring mugs of beer and talking to the locals. The sign reads, One mug, one gold, four mugs, six gold. That doesn't make any sense. Smell the air. You pause to inhale the rich smell of brewed grains that hangs around the tent. It is quite nourishing. One of the bar women catches your smile. Nice, yes. Even nicer in a glass. A tall, spindly creature raises his voice to announce he is buying four mugs. A huge cheer goes up, but mostly from the women behind the bar. Um. I don't know. I'm going to run out of money. You elbow your way to the bar and wave to attract the attention of one of the women. Greetings. What can I do for you? Uh, what's on sale? I'll buy some beer. Why are four mugs so expensive? You ask. Isn't it cheaper to buy four separately? Oh, no, no, no. It's a special offer, you say. Four mugs for six gold pieces. That's... But that's more than buying separately. <laughs> oh. I see your mistake. It's a common one. We should fix the sign. But she doesn't explain. She quickly disappears to serve another customer. Just then, two creatures walk past. So you say he wasn't dead when they buried him? This is the first. Not quite dead. Enough undead you could talk to him. <laughs> you move away from the tent to listen to the creatures. Nettles. Why can't they just stay dead when they get dead? Couldn't agree more. But at least they bury him anyway. One less noble for the boss to worry about. They disappear into the crowd. A stocky dwarf knocks into you briefly. Begging your pardon, he murmurs before slipping away into the crowd. 
He just took... That guy stole me. I got robbed. <laughs> I don't want... Well, I don't remember what this does. I'm bought fine. You head back over to the tent and wave for a goblin-s. I'll buy four, you say. The half-goblin woman returns with a grin and raises a cry as you pay six gold pieces and she pulls the drinks. He's buying four! Another lucky customer taking advantage of our offer. Nearby drunks turn their heads. Um, so just share it with everybody. I'll share them, you tell the surrounding crowd. The woman behind the bar nods and murmurs. Good idea. This stuff's a bit too strong to drink a lot of. She sets down four mugs in front of you. Should I just drink them all? They're all laughing at you. <laughs> I don't... Did I do this last time? I don't... Drink... I'm gonna drink them all. Selfishly, you knock back the first mug, then the second, then the third, and fourth, without sharing the mugs around. Despite buying them on offer. The beer is watery and somewhat unpleasant, but you don't really notice the ill effects until a few minutes have passed. Suddenly, your head is swimming and your stomach is turning over. I had two more, have you? Well, why don't you settle your stomach with another? I feel terrible. You've poisoned me. Sure. Too far under the influence to not to agree, you buy another mug of beer and drain it. Now you feel really bad. And your head and stomach are swirling like you've been face down in a cesspool. As you stagger away from the hut, stumbling over your feet, you look back and see a wide pipe running from the back of the tent and directly into the Jibaji River. The last thing you realize is that the beer isn't beer at all, but river water. You've been poisoned with river water. I'm dead. <laughs> I'll drink them all. I'll drink them all. And they're all mine. They're all my beers. So nobody can have them. And they're all like, dude, all right. Go for it. Oh my god, he actually bought four. Yeah, fuck you. I'm drinking them all. <laughs> yeah, but what, smelling the air is delicious, but apparently... So what? What am I smelling that heals me for one health? I'm gonna buy one mug. Paying a gold piece, you buy a frothing mug of beer. The ale looks muddy and somewhat disgusting. It doesn't taste like beer at all. This isn't beer! Excuse me. Uh, what is this? Finest beer. From her expression, she isn't telling the whole truth. You drink some. Oh, I wish I could, but I can't drink while working. Just then, another customer rolls up, his nose bright red and his eyes soggy. I'll buy it for you. He puts ten gold pieces down on the counter. Enough for all six of you behind the bar. To you, he remarks, Cannily. Three sets of twins. Remarkable, isn't it? Steal the money and run out of the leap. Make her drink some. No, 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 no. Excuse me. Hey, excuse me, miss. Have some of that. Have some. Have some. Please, please have some. It's your beer. It's delicious. I. No, by the way. When I took that sip, I was just kidding. It's the it's delicious. You you should have you take a sip. Have some. Take a sip of your own beer. Take half the money and stay quiet. It's 10 gold. What if I take half of it? Take the money and run. Enough of this. You snatch the money from the counter. Steve shouts the woman behind the bar. The drunk man and quite a few others turn on you furiously. Don't... Do, <laughs> don't you mess about with our beer! 
They cry and jump on you, fist pounding. Fight back. You try to fight back, but the energy of the drunks is furious, and they are fearless to boot. You eventually escape with several cuts, bruises, and scratches. Look back. Looking back, you notice a pipe running from the tent directly into the Jabaji River. It seems beer isn't beer after all. Hey, we're good. Murmur of excitement, then quite suddenly, a small... What? From across the field comes a murmur of excitement, then quite suddenly, a small tornado lifts a tent sharply into the air and away. I got 10 gold for that. You can enjoy your, your, your shit wine. That's fine. Your poop wine. I got 10 gold. You cross the fair to join a crowd gathered at a safe distance around a dancing bear. A dwarf stands in front of the bear holding a lead that is fastened to a ring in the creature's nose. See my beauty dance, he growls, jerking the cord. The bear stumbles around in obvious pain. Hmm. As he tugs the cable, he plays a pipe with great gusto. The crowd are in stitches of laughter at the poor bear's performance. Free the bear. I might die doing this. Hold on. You hang around for a moment and watch... No! Fuck you! Most curious see if the bear will strike down its miserable little owner. Suddenly a cry goes up from somewhere in the audience. My gold! My gold! My pickpocket! Beware! There's a pickpocket at work! Pickpocket! You and the rest of the crowd spin around towards the voice and see a small creature darting off away from the crowd and into one of the tents. Uh, no, fuck you. With everyone looking in one direction, you turn to look in the other and see the dwarf release the cord holding the bear in place. But the creature does not go wild or attempt to run. In fact, both the dwarf and the bear seem to shrink down to the ground. What's going on? Is this part of the show? Okay. Just illusions, perhaps. The crowd are out for blood now. It seems several of them have been robbed. Turning on one another, accusations of theft begin to fly this way and that. Things are turning ugly, and you are caught in the middle of it. See what I can get. In the tumult, you wait for an opportunity. In every fight, there will always be some gold pouches swinging low for the plucking. You are knocked about a fair bit as you wait, but finally, you see a bulging wallet just inches from your grasp. Look at the owner. Glancing up at the owner of the wallet, you find yourself staring into the huge face of a mountain man. You're a thief, are you? No, I'm no thief, you tell him. <laughs> Look at the size of his gold pouch! Remarks another voice nearby in the crowd. It's a trigger that sends the mountain man who had just been robbed himself into a fearsome rage. Oh, God, I have to win. I got to win every single one of these. Let's go. Seven? Oh, fuck. <laughs> An instant later, the man is thundering down on you, arm swinging, and he charges with every ounce of his strength, knocking you back. The mountain man swings a final punch that knocks you into the mud. Then, for good measure, he stamps on your head and walks away. He probably doesn't realize that he has broken your skull wide open. Whatever. Ven. All right, he's gonna come in full blast. Let's go like eight. How? Yeah. No. No. Okay, wait, wait, wait. You put up your own and circle. The mountain man steps back. He's going to block again. All right. You stay low. The crowd around jostle and struggle, fighting amongst themselves. He circles through the fighting crowd. He's coming in. He's coming in full blast. 
Oh my fucking god, dude. What are you talking about? I'm dead. That was three defends in a row. He steps back. Okay. He paces left. He circles right. <laughs> he edges back. You piece of shit. Fine, take that. Okay, he sneers at me. Does that mean he's coming in, or...? Does that... He sneers at me. Does that mean he's gonna swing? Got him. That was too much, though. That was way too much. I'm dead. Yeah, I'm dead. I literally... No! I'm not dead. Pray to the ape. We're good. Five health. Nice. Hell yeah. Thank God for the ape. I wouldn't be able to beat that. Now, he dodges back. Now we go little, tiny, little bit 2.0. And that should do it. Now we go full blast. He goads you. All right, can I do it? Yep, I got him. You launch at him again. You grab a nearby bottle and break it against his head. The final punch makes the mountain man's head spin. Oh, oh, never mind. He curses, throwing up his hands. Keep your gold, thief. With that, he stomps away, punching a few other people as he goes. You slither your way back out of the crowd to the main part of the fair. From somewhere nearby, you catch a glimpse of a shadowy figure disappearing behind a tent. Something about the way it moves is familiar. I didn't get his gold. Follow the figure. Follow the figure. You push through the crowd, following the dark figure into a narrow gap. Cautiously, you enter the narrow space. And suddenly, there is a hand at your throat. I will kill you. Raise a voice you recognize. <laughs> you laugh with delight. It's Flanker, the assassin whose life you spared before you reached Torapani. Greetings, you declare enthusiastically. Flanker nods. He does not smile, but he seems pleased to see you. Aha, my friend and enemy. I see, like myself, you also enjoy the fun of the Festival of Thieves. But you look in poor shape. Have others been treating you more roughly than I was able to myself? And how have you fared in Kari? city is full of devils. Flanker laughs. <laughs> it is indeed. But at least you have not had to face the portal traps. They'll take your smile and move it to your throat, as we assassins say. Portal traps. I want your help. Flanker nods. Ask of it, and I shall do what I can. Oh, we send him on like an errand? I've been told to find a priest. I need to find a beggar who is a noble. Tell me about those portal... I need to know the order of the spell lines. Um, probably this one, right? Because that's... Let's check. Uh... Lord Theta is in the ruins. So, it's, this is the beggar. So, I probably want to know this, right? Or the order. I need to find a beggar who was a noble. I need to find the order of the spell lines. Order. Okay, I need to know the order. Flanker nods. I am told that Sansus did not entrust any of his nobles with the knowledge of their correct order. It was his final failsafe. 
That does not mean it is not known. You might appeal to one of the gods to learn. Which god? Slang is not strong enough for such knowledge, I think. Though you could try his shrine. Between the well and the docks. Otherwise, Korga would know. But his temple is by the north gate. He nods finally. But I must be away. Perhaps I will see you again. I'll be drinking at the Wayfarer's Rest tonight. In the docks, join me if you will. I'm getting fucking weirder. You nod to flank her and return. Alright, the Wayfarer's Rest. Um... Slang. Okay, we need to, we're need. we going to go find Slang. Slang is up here, right? <laughs> yeah. At the... Where, where is it? Tonight? The Wayfarer's Rest. Where was that? Go do Korga? I can't do Korga. I killed someone. Korga won't talk to me. You walk to the north end of the fairground midway. The fair continues from here, and a road leads uphill. Bare knuckle fighting musicians. Um, let's do the musician. You head over to where a crowd are watching a troop of dancers, who spin and swirl in time to a lively tune. There's something quite hypnotic about the performance. Wait, I can do it too? <laughs> Let's do it. I'll play with him. Cause a stench. Somebody farted at the concert. Uh, the sus. There's does slow. I mean, I'm going to play with them. Yeah, that sounds like the fun thing to do. Let's do it. You cast the spell and begin to play your pipe. With the other dancers already setting a wonderful mood, the spell's effects are magnified, and soon the entire crowd is dancing and jigging with each other. It is quite a sight. A hundred of Kare strange and wonderful creatures all waving their arms and stamping their feet. After about half an hour, the crowd grows tired and wanders off arm in arm and claw in claw to see the other attractions of the fair. One of the musicians approaches you. Nice work. Not often we get a talented amateur for the thieves dance. The crowd will think you were a stooge. Oh, the thieves dance. The musician shrugs. It's just a name. He looks you over with a cany eye. Pack, sword, battle scars. You're not from Kari, are you? Not just here to enjoy the fair. I'm visiting my father. <laughs> Just visiting my dad. Maybe you can help me? Maybe you can help. Yeah. Maybe I can. The musician drops down to the dirt and puts his hand out. My name is Jira, and it's good to meet you. You shake his hand. So, uh, you helped us get enough coins to pay for our night. How can I help you? I need to open the north gate, or I need somewhere to stay. I'm probably going to say that. Because we, uh, well, we know what we need to go for the spell lines. But I've really, my health is terrible. I need somewhere to stay. Well, you have to be careful in inns of Kare. Some of them work in commission for the slavers, if you know what I mean. He smiles sadly and for some reason taps his forearm as he speaks. We're staying at the meat and cleaver by the docks, and I wouldn't recommend anywhere else. If you value your freedom, I'll see you there. He winks and heads off into the crowd. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Bare knuckle fighting. You cross the fairground to a wrestling ring. A ruffian inside is announcing the current challenge. People of Kai, are you ready for a fight? 
In the white corner, we have our challenger, Anvar the Barbarian. Crowd cheers and whoops. Look over Anvar. Anvar is about half as tall as you again, with sheets of muscle on his arms and legs. But he's probably lighter than the ogre, which will mean he has less momentum. And in the black corner, the brawling champion of Kare, the one they call Skull Splitter, the Ogre Kagao of Dadule. The ogre looks as thick as any ogre you might meet, but he is made of solid muscle, his arms and legs like the twisted bark of trees. Challenger, are you ready? demands the ruffian. Anver nods and beats his chest. Place a bet. You find a wager man by looking for his enormous hat, to which odds and returns are pinned on bits of cloth. Feeling lucky, are you? <laughs> Place your money on me. His palms are sweating, and you notice he carries flick blades inside his sleeves. Give me all your money. <laughs> what are the odds? Three to one on the challenger. One to three on the champion. What does that mean? <laughs> for every coin you bet on the Barbarian, you get three extra back if he wins. But for every three coins you put on the Ogre, you will only get one extra back if he wins. Alright, place a bet. You take your money. Bet on the Barbarian. I bet on the Barbarian. Maximum bet is three pieces. Good odds, though. You hand over three gold pieces, and the bookkeeper makes a mark on his hat for the bet. Meanwhile, in the ring, the fight has begun. The barbarian in the white corner growls and beats his chest. The ogre raises his fist into the air and shakes them. Quite a lot of posturing so far, but not much actual wrestling. Read minds. Stop locked doors. Cause slowness. Sap. Cause. Oh, I, yeah, I can cheat. I can cheat. I can cheat. I can sap the ogre and win. Yep. What is K? Create illusions. This might be fun. Wait, that would be cheating, though. It'd be like, where the fuck did this guy come from? Let's do slowness. You ready the enchantment, preparing to slow down one of the two combatants. Cast it on the ogre. You cast a spell over the ogre and the balance of the fight begins to change. Suddenly, the ogre looks dizzy and slow and cannot seem to grip his opponent properly. The barbarian beats his chest and pounds the ogre heavily about the head. Anvar is looking good. <laughs> Shout for the barbarian. Finish him! To the barbarian, who bellows with anger. The slow-moving ogre roars with rage and struggles forward against the barbarian, landing a mighty blow. Anvar's agility is helping him take the fight. Then the ogre puts in a devastating sideswipe. The barbarian staggers suddenly. The crowd gasps, but he picks himself up once more. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Come on, her just. <sighs> Cast depression on the ogre. You cast the enchantment over the ogre who begins to look thoroughly miserable. You have given Anvar a much needed boost. The ogre's lip has split and is bleeding. Anvar roars and thumps his opponent in the back. Anvar is winning. <laughs> Should I che wait, cheer for the ogre? Cheer for the barbarian. Should I cheer for the ogre now? Uh, 
Uh, let's read the ogre's mind. You read the ogre's mind, but find no particular thoughts except one. A sound playing over and over. It is the sound of an arm bone snapping in two. Growling and muttering, the ogre works into the barbarian, cracking his skull. Anvar is looking stronger than ever. What? <laughs> God damn it, kill him already! Okay, illusions. You ready the spell, but what illusion will you cast? Make the ogre see the barbarian as plague-ridden. Make the barbarian see the ogre grow taller. <laughs> Make the ogre see the barbarian as plague-ridden. You cast your spell over the ogre, making the barbarian appear plague-ridden and infectious. He begins to hang back, not wanting to engage. And every time Anvar grabs him, he begins to whimper with fear. The fight is going really badly for Skull Splitter now. Finally, it is all over. With a single throw, Anvar the Barbarian powers forward and hurls Skull Splitter to the mat. The crowd goes wild. You find the bookkeeper to collect your winnings. You got lucky. Sulks the bookkeeper. He hands over 12 gold pieces. Oh, yeah. Inside the ring, the master of the fight raises the Barbarian's fist in the air. Who challenges our champion? The prize is 10 gold pieces. I'll do it. I challenge him. You cry. All eyes turn to look at you. The fight master beams. We have a stranger taking the challenger. Let him through. Is there any food? Yeah, all right. I can drink this. I don't, I don't care about healing somebody else. It's for me. Okay. The crowd parts and you are helped up into the ring. Under his breath, the fight master outlines the rules. A fair fight, no magic, and pound your opponent until they can't stand. Ready? You look over your opponent. He is almost half as tall as you again. With muscles on his chest and arm, like sculpted wax. In the back corner, then, the ruffian announces, Is Anvar in the white corner? The ruffian turns to you and hisses. What should I call you? The Anilander, the stranger. I don't care, just get on with it. The Anilander. Oh boy, I gotta, okay. The Anilander are you to cry, shouting it out to the crowd so they can hear. They catch the name and throw it up to the sky. The Anilander! They cheer. The crowd begin to furiously place bets. You can hear them discussing your relative merits. He looks feeble. He looks like a maniac. You ready? Your fists. Full blast. Got him. Got him. Mm -hmm. He steps backwards across the ring, putting space between you. That's going to be a defense. He's going to defend, but we're going to go like 2.5. Fuck you. All right. He grabs you and knees you in the midriff, knocking the wind from your chest. Okay, I got to defend here. Oh, come on. It's all right. I got enough power. I'm going to go in full blast. Readying a forceful blow, the Barbarian blocks. Drop back defensively. Knocking you back. Okay, so he used his whole bar. We're gonna go like four. I could actually, he might be able to do more. Yep, thank God. We're good. A gasp goes up from the crowd. We're going full blast again. 6.4, get him. Alright, it's okay, it's okay. Alright, alright, I'll win. 
The barbarian drops into a defensive crouch. The barbarian is holding back. Someone in the crowd is shouting advice. Body blow time. There it is. Got him. What? How is that only one? Shaking his stupid head, he picks himself to his feet once more. He moves away towards the other corner. Can I get him here? Can I catch him? I got him. You lunge forward again, readying a forceful swing. You hurtle forward. Anvar staggers back, gasping his face a mess of blood and bruises. Summoning the last ounce of strength in your arms, you ready a final knockback, knockout punch that sends him back across the mat and out of the ring. Look at this fucking cash I'm building up here. You stagger from the ring, the crowd cheering for you, and collect your winnings. I got 33 gold now. All right, the end of the fair. You push your way through the crowd, following the road uphill. The party is getting wilder, and you would do well to be away from here before things get out of hand. At the far edge of the fair, the litter has left a tide mark on the grass. There is one last small tent here, probably a ticket booth that has simply been ignored by the crowds of Kare. Look back. Looking back, you see what looks like one of the tents going up in flames. It must be part of the entertainment as no one seems too concerned. In fact, a great cheer goes up as one of the strings of flags collapses into the bonfire. <laughs> Ahead, the road continues through empty fields and patches of rubble-strewn wasteland, but it climbs, so it must be heading for the center of Kare. Steam rises from a large building beside a fork in the road. You pause to walk around the small tent. To discover it is, in fact, a small attraction of its own. A sign above the door reads, Cabinet of Fortune, try your luck. Prize for all. You have time to test your luck, no doubt, if you wanted. Here we go up. Uh, we're gonna go in here. You go over to the tent and push back the flap. Inside, a grubby bearded man leaps up from where he was sitting, cross-legged on the floor, and comes over to pump your hand. Welcome, welcome, my friend! And let's see what prize you can win today. You must know this. There are no losers at Honest Hannah's Cabinet of Fortune. He gestures with one hand towards a large glass cabinet in the center of the tent. Interesting. Uh, what do I do? How much does it cost? Look inside the cabinet. You step forward and peer in through the glass. Inside there are piles of jewelry, books, gold, and other things as well as a small, wiry creature curled up fast asleep. What is that creature? My little pet. He's perfectly harmless. Oh, well, he bites, but only when you open the cabinet to feed him. Uh, what do I do? It's a most simple game. You give me two gold pieces, and then my little pet will fetch something for you. Fuck up. The fuck up. The fuck up. Resurrect the dead. Rap. Talk all languages. Talk all languages. Hell. Read minds. Uh, sus, obviously. Uh, magic protection. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna do, uh, rap. You put on the wig and cast your spell. Not on Hannah, of course. You can understand everything he says. But what about the creature in the glass cabinet? Sadly, though, it is not speaking. It sits in glum... Thoughtful silence. Shit. Do 
here. You pay two gold pieces, and Hannah goes over to the cabinet and presses a small button on the side. It seems to operate a... Hold on. I just sneezed. I have to sneeze again. Okay. It seems to operate a cantilevered spike, which pokes the creature, who squeals, jumps from its perch, and begins fluttering around inside the cave. What now? Well, you can try to influence its choice by shouting at it. The angrier you can make it, the better for the prize. Usually, I'm not sure why. As if to make the point, the creature picks up a ruby ring, then smiles and drops it, and flies up to the top of the tank. Shout something? Although it does not seem very fair... You determine to infuri you f you determine to infuriate the creature as much as possible. Stupid creature, freedom, Lorag, Kari, Lorag, freedom. Freedom. The creature in the tank flaps around gently. What else could you try? I mean, Hannah, obviously, like right. Hannah! The strange mind is still flying around with glowing eyes. There must be something that will get this creature to see truly see red. Lorag. The flying thing circles around furiously. Eventually, the creature selects something from the prize pool, which it drops into a chute at the far end of the cabinet. I take, what if I just leave it? Will that do something? What is it? A giant's tooth. A good prize! You nod to Hannah, who grimaces as you head back out of the tent. Alright, we got we got another tooth. I wonder how that could probably go a few different ways. Cool. Okay. Alright, so we can all, we can either go. Yeah, we can go out now. So we're trying to get here, this area here. Keep that in mind. You're back by the bathhouse on the edge of the fair. All right, so we can go in the bathhouse, or we can go uphill. We need to eventually go uphill. Should we go in the bathhouse? Let's do the bathhouse. You step in the cool of the bathhouse. It is a wide building of marbled tiles and a sweet smell of pine and fresh wood. Gentle noises echo and murmur around the walls. A creature by the front desk greets you with a smile. Good afternoon. The water is cool and fresh today. A swim costs four gold pieces. I need it. Is it worth it? Oh, very. The creature replies. <laughs> the waters of Kara are known for their healing and refreshing qualities. We have a steam room and a lagoon pool. You'll be well catered for. Sure. You hand over four gold pieces. And the concierge gestures you through into the center of the bathhouse, where a wide pool awaits, with trees and shrubs on either side. Into the pool. From across the room, steam curls from the doorway of a glass-doored room. You strip off and pile your clothes and belongings in the corner of the room. Uh, I'm going to the steam room. You enter the steam room and take a seat on one of the benches. The temperature is almost unbearable. Through the curling smoke, you see another figure in the shadows. You are not alone. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hey, how you doing? What's up, dude? Yep. <sighs> I would... N that would never happen. I would never do this. Hey, what's up? 
Hey, you need a spotter? It's a steam room, dude. Greetings! You call through the smoke. The other figure does not reply, but stands and moves away through the steam. You feel the blast of cold air as the door opens and then closes. <laughs> I'm sorry, if I'm in the steam room and I hear somebody from across, I was sitting on the other side of the bench, say, Greetings! I'm gonna be like, yeah, I'm getting the fuck out of here. I'm gonna go somewhere else. You sit in the smoke, enjoying the relaxing steam until you cannot take the heat anymore. Wait a little longer. <clears throat> you wait a little longer. As the steam sinks deep into your bones and makes your muscles relax, you feel quite wonderful for it. A second figure who you had not noticed before, stands and leaves the steam room. <laughs> you head back out of the steam room. You feel your shoulders unnodding and your body relaxing. You dive into the pool and swim a few enjoyable lengths. You feel better for the exercise. You feel a great calm and relaxedness flooding through your veins. Feeling much better, you turn and collect your belongings. Yeah, check them over. Not trusting the city to pass up the chance to rob you you check through your belongings, but everything seems to still be in, in place. Pleased, you head for the exit. The creature at the front desk beams cheerfully at you. You step outside onto the street. We just, that's, there it is. Good rest. All right, we're going to go up, uphill. The road twists and turns up the rise until you emerge into a wider road on the edge of the dense slum. From inside, down a street to the left, you can hear the very faint sound of singing. A smell of rotting fish begins to fill the air. You must be close to the docks. Alright, so where is this place? Between the well and the docks. Is it this way, or is it this way? Is it the docks, or is it near the well? I'm gonna imagine we can we, we can go this way and hopefully we can go from here to there. Let's go to the well. Winding between tall, crazily built slum dwellings, the road you are now on leads through the dense lower city. The street is narrow, and you keep your head held high in case someone should try their luck with a blade. After a few minutes of edging forwards, you emerge into a wider space, a flagstoned plaza. At the center of it is a circular well mouth. Alleyways lead off in four directions. You pause to look around the edge of the square. The alleyways all look the same, except that to the left, the lane heads downwards, turning away from the center of Kari. The only thing the alleys have in common is that they converge here. Once, presumably, this well served all the people in the district, but perhaps there were too many people, because now the well seems dusty and dry. Look down the well. Leaning over the edge, you peer down into the depths of the well. Strange, this well seems to have handholds cut into its stones. They appear good enough to climb down. Uh, we're not going down here. We're going to choose the road. Here we go. All right, so we need to, this is where we need to go. This is where we need to be. This direction between the well and the docks. This street is a little wider and more well-paved than some of the others. You can see tracks where carts have come this way. You hear the sound of voices around a corner. Walk on. You walk around the corner, intrigued by the sound. There is a small crowd of people talking and singing inside a low stone shrine. Beyond, you can see the sparkle of the river and the smell of rotting fish. You're nearly at the docks. There's the shrine. All right, let's go. Let's get that out of the line. You step into the doorway of the shrine at the same time as a woman and her child are leaving. He really is a holy man, mother, the little one is saying. Lassen's lame brother answered his question and he ran off the stage. The mother nods and the pair leave. Interesting. Step inside. The shrine is an old stone building garishly decorated with hanging cloths and thick candles that fill the air with the smell of grease and tar. At the far end on a low platform stands a hooded figure in a white robe 
was talking to the assembled crowd. Oh, this is the Cerise. This is okay. Yep. I remember this. Remember this? We saw maybe we, we read our own fortune. This is we did this already. Remember? It was like the guy in the white robe. Does anyone else wish to test? Let me do that again. Does anyone else wish to take the test of slang? God of malice. Priest calls out. A murmur goes around the crowd. People are nervous but excited. Examine the crowd. The crowd is a mixture of young and old, women and men. Some cheer and joke and murmur, while others have their legs and arms folded in a devout pose and pray through silent lips. How many are spectators and how many are followers of slang, you cannot tell. Anyone who can answer the question will be granted their wish. The priest continues. Wait and watch. You wait and watch. Suddenly a man leaps to his feet. I'll do it, he declares. The rest of the group cheers, and the man, a geriatric, is helped up onto the platform. Are you a follower of slang? The man spits. Very well. In one corner of the room, a gong is sounded, and the crowd falls silent. Which do you choose? The priest demands of the man. Will you take the impossible challenge? Or pay the price of the easy challenge. The man looks uncertain and turns to the audience. People begin to shout suggestions. Choose the impossible. Choose the easy one. Choose the impossible, you cry out, adding your voice to those around you, bellowing loud and confidently. After a few minutes, the priest quiets the room and turns back to the man. So... What do you choose? I'll take the impossible challenge. The man grins. Very well, very well. There is no price for the impossible challenge. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait and listen. Then tell me, what is the answer to the question that is never asked? The man falls silent for a moment, chewing his lower lip and musing over his answer. Um, s uh, silence. The priest smiles sadly and shakes his head. A clever answer, but not correct. Aww. The crowd sigh in disappointment. A man at your elbow remarks, People always try the impossible challenge. You'd think they'd get the hint. The man leaves the platform and the priest turns back to the crowd. Who will be next? As he waits for an answer, the priest plucks a knife from his belt and casually stabs it into his own hand. I'll take the challenge because we know the answer. I will take your challenge. A stranger. Welcome him. Please welcome. Welcome him. The crowd whisper and murmur as you make your way to the platform. Welcome, stranger. Are you ready to take the challenge, knowing full well that very few succeed? I am. The crowd cheer your response. Then know this. Slang is not a punishing god, but he is malicious. He does not wish for you to fail, but should you fail, he wishes you to know that it was all your own fault. Mm-hmm. The priest continues. Our practice is that you may choose which question to answer. But know this, one is impossible and the other is easy. And to answer the easy question, you must give up something you hold most dear. The crowd are watching in, a, in expectant silence. It's time for you to choose. Make sure I get this right. What was it? The answer to the question. In a vision, you saw the answer to the question that has never been asked, Cerisi. 
Okay. Just making sure I get it right. I choose the impossible question. The crowd wait expectantly, then the priest closes his eyes and intones. What is the answer to the question that has never been asked? Your heart leaps. Your vision is coming to pass. I don't know. Cerisi. There is a moment. Pause. As the priest screws up his eyes. The priest nods once, slowly. That is correct. The question has never been answered. In the 3,000 years since this site was first made, holy to slang. The answer has been passed on from one priest to the next. I never thought I would be the one to hear it spoken, because I do not understand it, and I do not know the question. He turns to you and bows his head once. You are truly blessed. Please, what is your wish? I wish to be rich beyond my imagination. Tell me the spell for the North Gate. Tell me the order of the spell. Can Kare be saved? I wish to be stronger than anyone ever. <laughs> That's such like a toddler, the thing to say. I wish to be stronger than anyone ever. Even Superman. Even God. I'm stronger than God and Superman. Um, it's the spell, right? Because uh, this is where one of the lines is from. Tell me the spell for the North Gate. Tell me the spell for the North Gate. The priest closes his eyes and summons his god. I cannot tell you the spell in its entirety, but Mulas, the second noble, was a follower of Slang, and the line he knew was, I bid you portals wide open. Got it. You thank him. The crowd reach out to touch your tunic as you make your way to the door. Clearly not many survive the challenge of slang. Back on the street, it is night. Time to find somewhere to rest. I said it, I said the, I said it wrong. <laughs> this priest has the only opportunity in his entire lifetime to hear this. It's been thousands of years and he screws up the sentence. He must be like, fuck! Oh, how can I do that? How can I be so stupid? You needed the order? Well, I didn't have I I didn't have the line. This is where I could get the line. Yeah, the the order is I, I don't I need the 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 lines first. Yeah, I I can still get it. I think I already, don't I already have the order? Wasn't it scratched on something? Hold on. Remember, wasn't I like I I, I swear? See, here it is, right there. No, something to Korg's grace. One lock. Wait, is this it? That's that's it, isn't it? Tumblers to yep, that's that's it. We got the we already have the order. One lock made of Gollum's hide. Tumblers two sealed deep inside. I bid you portals open wide. For my legs to walk in here and fucking stride. We just need the last line. Which is down here. Okay, let's uh, head to the docks. What's the, the, the clue for this one? Okay, Seventh Noble Theta is a beggar. Blind beggar. Can be found blind and begging in the ruins of the fallen quarter of the city. So, he's 
down here. So we got to figure out a way to get down there. Okay. Uh, let's head for the docks. The smell of rotting fish and mucky water fills your nostrils. You know this area well. You've reached the docks once more. The beating heart of Kare. There are two or three ships moored for the night. And the space between them and the road is filled with a large, huge number of stalls and little shops. Selling everything from fishing tackle to sailing blocks to barrels of woodlouse rum. This must be a thriving marketplace during the day. With night approaching, it is a maze of booths and cloth. A single bridge crosses the river here, operated with ropes to let the tall ships through. Right now, the bridge is up to allow ships to sail through undisturbed. There are two inns visible from here. The Wayfarer's Rest and the Mead and Cleaver. The second is the one Jira the musician recommended. Well, wait a minute. Um... Musician friend or flanker? We had a, a new musician friend. Do we give a shit about flank? All right, you, this is a, you guys have to put a poll up here. Meet the one is going to be here. Two is here. One is flanker at the Wayfarer's Rest. Two is Jiro the musician and a band of, of merry musicians. Uh, while you do that, I'm just going to go piss. I'll be right back. I am back. I'll just gonna be quick. Uh, so how 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 uh how crazy was this? Sixty nine percent want to go to flanker. Okay. Well, what about our band of merry men? What if they have a bunch of cool stuff? What if they have items? And what if it's like a, what if it's like five people and they all hang out with us? All right, wayfarers rest. Let's go. You make your way inside the Wayfarer's Rest. It's a lively and bustling place. <laughs> Jesus. The innkeeper behind the bar is trying to serve numerous creatures all demanding ale at the same time. While around the tables, salty types and buxom wenches are laughing together and singing shanties. The table or the bar? <laughs> um, flanker, flanker, flanker. I don't. I gotta meet flanker here. I'm meeting flanker here. Let's go to the bar. I got money. 
You fight your way through the creatures to the bar. With a thump on the bar top, you catch the innkeeper's attention. Greetings. Nice place you have here. The innkeeper nods at you. He's clearly impressed by your dress and well-educated tone. And what be your purpose in these air parts? I do need food. Uh, I need food. Can you feed me in this hellhole? The innkeeper nods. I, uh, the gills, or six gold pieces, hearty as you like. <laughs> the other creatures at the bar jostle and push each other for space. Um, that's a, that's expensive. I need it though. You hand over six gold pieces, and the innkeeper nods. Get yourself a table, and we'll bring it out when it's ready. Okay, what about your ale? The innkeeper holds up one finger. Orophian knocks over a dwarf's mug of ale. The fight that breaks out is short, sharp, and ends with the heel of an axe breaking the ruffian's nose. A great cheer goes up, and the innkeeper replaces the ale free of charge. Uh, I'll take some ale. I'll have a mug then, you declare. You lay down a coin, and the innkeeper passes you a flagon. What about a room? How much is a room? The innkeeper holds up four fingers rather than shouting across the bar. Uh, I'm going to drink my ale. You knock tankards with the creatures on either side of you, then drain the beer in one swoop. It is a nutty and pleasant beer. It fills your stomach with a pleasing warm glow. Anytime I read about... The, the, I, you guys get like this too. When I read about people drinking beer in fantasy novels. I want a beer right now. Right? I don't even really like beer. I'm not a big beer guy. But I just think of this frothy, freezing cold mug that's got this stout in it. I just want one. They describe beer so insanely and so deliciously in all these fantasy novels. Oh, a flagon of ale! I, I don't know. <laughs> they describe it like a nice root beer. Yeah. Replace that with a, with a soda, right? Or a root beer. A nice, frothy, foamy root beer. Oh, it's so good. Okay. Uh, let's, take, let's take another one. Come on, I got money. Oh, I didn't read this. When you knock tankers of the creature on either side of you, then drain the beer in one swoop. It's a nutty and pleasant. It fills your stomach with a pleasing, warm glow. <laughs> Finest in Kare, the innkeeper remarks, seeing your satisfied smile. Ain't nothing that beats a good glass of Wayfarer's Ripe. You should have another, too. A second's always better. Yeah, I'm taking another one. Let's go. You knock back your second mug of fine ale and feel yourself ruddy with good health. This inn is a charming place, really. And the people here are very friendly. The innkeeper nods with approval. All the best can put it away, he remarks. Another one. You buy some more beer. You sweep back a third mug of veil. The effect is immediate. First your eyes start to fizz, then your head starts to ache. You half get to your feet, but you can barely work out which way is up. Three blurry men approach you and take you by the arm. <laughs> you all right? Let me help you with that. Something moves and you feel a hard blow on your head. About three seconds later, you realize you've been knocked unconscious as everything goes black. <laughs> what? What about Flip Flanker? Your eyes open, your head is thundering, and it feels ready to split. Where's Flanker? We drank two beer. What was what's going on? Do we get to rewind? This is a chat decision, not mine. It's got to be at least 75%, by the way. One rewind, yes or no? 
It's got to be 75%. Yes, or it's not happening. This is the only... That's it. It's got to get to 75%. Are we rewinding? Yes or no? It says a poll is already active, but I can't see it. Do you guys see a poll? It says one's already there. Where is it? Yeah, it says a poll is active. Uh oh. Uh, let me see if I can. I think it's stuck. Yeah, it says a poll is already active. It's stuck. You had to refresh for the poll. Uh, I'll try refreshing it. I have to refresh chat. All right, hold on. Let me, let me refresh chat real quick. Uh-huh. Refresh. Uh, okay. Did that work? I can't see it. Wait, oh, you guys are lying? Um, I can see it now. All right, so what was it at? It was 80%, 79%. All right. 79%. We're going to the bar. All right, greetings. This time we're going to, well, this time we're going to just... We're going to buy food. This place is great. Pay for a meal. I'm going to do everything as I said, but I'm only going to drink two beers. Oh, whoops. All right. Price of your ale. All right. Yes, it's the best. Yes, I'll buy some. All right. Delicious. It's good. It's so good. All right. Buy another one. This one's delicious, too. All right. Goodbye. You push your way back out of the crowd at the bar. Your eyes roam around the busy room and the light on a shadowy figure in the corner. It's Flanker. Flanker's table. Okay, let's go. You go over and sit by the assassin. There you are, he declares with pleasure. He seems more relaxed than earlier. Perhaps he has completed whatever mission he was here to perform. But tell me, friend, do you play dice? Swindle stones. Ah, I see you know it. From a hidden pouch in his tunic, he pulls a set of dice out and pushes half of them across the table to you. Sure. You take them. Uh, what's the stake? Hmm. Let me propose a modest wager. If you win, I will help you with your quest. But if I win, my obligation to you is at an end. And should we meet again... I will have the freedom to cleave your neck from your shoulders. Do you agree? Uh, I prefer to keep you in my debt. If I lose, you'll kill me. Very well. Well. I just have to win. Let's go. Flanker hands you your dice and takes the first bid. Just don't lose. So what do you do in car, my friend? Three ones. Let's go fucking hard. Whoa. You don't have... He has to have four of those. 
I will not allow your inane words to turn me from my game, so do not attempt such a strategy. There's no way. There are five threes. You gotta be shitting me, dude. Really? That's so... That's actually bullshit. Truly. Hmm. Two ones. Three threes. Oh, no. <laughs> What is this hand? This guy's got a full house? What is this? Twos and ones? What is this? His Both of his hands have been outrageous. They've been outrageous. I'm so screwed. Yeah, I mean, I have one of them. <laughs> Call it. Uh, so he has to have three of them. Does he? Ha is he gonna have three of these? No, there's no way. You don't have three. It's your whole hand. Call. There we are. All right, that's better. One, three. Mm. Two fours. Don't call it. You piece of shit. You definitely have it. Okay, so I'm going to say four. I have two. That means he... Okay, yeah, we're doing four. Call it. <sighs> yes. Ah, uh, this is not a bad hand. I'm going to say two ones. Two. Fours. Oh, you're in trouble. You're actually in trouble. Three fours. Call it. Four fours. Mm. Should I say five fours? No, that's that, that has to mean that one of us has to have a full set. But what if he has two? We have the same amount of uh, dice. Liar. Got him. One, two. Uh, two twos. Three twos. <laughs> you are stupid. You are stupid. What a comeback. This is big. Uh, let's start with one, two. One, five, okay. Two ones. Call it. Two. Okay, so he has a five. Fuck. <laughs> he has a five. So I, ha uh, I have a five too, though. Three... No, I, I, I keep saying five because I just see it as a regular dice. Don't call it. It's fine. Whatever. He's going to win a round. He picked the two worst possible things. It's all right. One, three. Um, one, four. Two threes. Ah, you lose. Ha. Uh, you are in my debt now, Blanker. You flick Blanker's final die off the table with a grin. I win. 
Mikard nods deeply. Sinla, preserve me. I have lost her you again. Come with me. I will take you to the council. I want the spell lines. Council. The leaders of Kare are mad men and pirates, but not fools. They might be persuaded to see the sense of your mission. Especially if we have the gold to cover their pockets. Shall we go? Uh, where is the council? It is hard to find. It is the tallest building in Kare. But most of its height is built underground. But from the street it looks like just another dwelling place. But I know where it is. Um, I kind of want to do my own path, but should we just go with them? What about your food? All right, let's go. Excellent. Blanker beams, finishes his beer, and then gestures to the door. Follow me. Follow flank. <laughs> you follow Flanker across the top of the dock. He moves fast like a fleeting shadow, but somehow contrives to never disappear from your sight. He does not speak, and your attempts at conversation are met with immediate silence. At the council. Finally, you arrive outside an ordinary looking building. This is it. Wait here. And I will go inside. He disappears through the door. The house into which Flanker has gone is just that, surely. The windows are thick bottle glass, and the door is tarred wood, studded with rivets and painted black. The roof, only a single story up, is overgrown with weeds. Other identical dwellings stand either side. Still nothing, the building in front of you does not seem like any council chamber. Perhaps this is a trap. Um, look in the windows. You peer in through one of the windows, but the glass is so thick and heavily streaked on the inside with candle grease that you cannot make out anything. I'm going to wait. You wait. Flanker does not reappear. I will wait. Minutes pass. Wait. Time passes. In the distance, you hear the sound of cartwheels rattling down the cobbles from the dock. They are quickly lost in the bustle of Lower Kare. Wait. You hear the footsteps of the guard marching past. Perhaps they will come here, but then they turn away. This place, it seems, is not even important enough to warrant a visit. Long minutes pass. <laughs> Time passes. More time passes. Minutes pass. All right. All right. It's time to go. Because what if something happened to him? One more. One more. More time. One more. One more. Try the door. Ignoring Flanker's instructions, you try the door. It is unlocked. I'm sorry, but like that was that was like 40 fucking minutes. That was 40 minutes. Something could have gone wrong. You are in a wide room. Chairs line the walls, but there is no other furniture. If this is someone's house, then it has become meticulously robbed. But if not, you cannot see what function it does serve. But it cannot be abandoned. A fire in the hearth blazes out heat. There's no sign of flanker anywhere, but there are also no other doors. God. It's just us. Cast the spell and wait as a calm voice enters your mind. It speaks in reassuring tones, telling that you are quite safe and everything in this room can be trusted, although that not, not everything is quite as it appears. Okay. 
Look at the fire. You go over to the fire to warm your hands. It seems normal enough and is hot enough to roast a pig. A voice booms out from nowhere. Please. Be seated. Uh. Okay. You choose a seat close to the fire and sit down. Something strange happens the moment you take your weight off your feet. It is as though the far wall no longer exists. In its place is a long hallway, lined with cloth banners and torches on brass poles. Two guards stand halfway down the hallway, and between them you see a flanker, deep in conversation. Yeah, well, what the fuck? Why am I sitting out there? Let me in. You hang back and watch the scene. I'm sorry. The council is in session. You cannot be disturbing them. Flanker is shaking his head. That is incorrect, as you well know. The guard smiles tightly in reply. Flanker turns around and waves to you. Please join me. Yeah, what the fuck, man? You stand astride. You, you lead me outside for like an hour. I'm sorry, but there's always you, okay. If I'm gonna, if we're adventuring together, you and I, you and me, us, and I say don't come in yet. Let me go in there. You wait outside. But if more than thirty minutes pass, come in with your sword drawn and be ready to fucking kill. You know what I mean? Like I'm, you give a time limit. If thirty-five minutes pass, come get me. Because something horrible happened to be ready with a fucking magical fireball, okay? Always give a hard time limit. The council. I'm afraid the council is in session, the guard repeats louder now. Wait, I need to see- what are you talking about? We need to see them. Then I need to see them. No one sees the council when they are in session. Um, what does Flanker do? You hang back to see what Flanker will do. The assassin bows his cowled head. I am sorry for your family, he says quietly. Then a moment later, his long steel blade is in his hands and at the neck of one of the guards. <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't do anything. Um, should I just let him do it? Should I go for the other guard? All right, we're going to go attack the other guard. I gotta follow Flanker's lead here. The two guards leap into defensive positions, wielding their halberds, weapons with reach hard to defend against and capable of doing unusual amounts of damage. All in. That's a three fucking damage move. The guard raises his halberd. He is clearly shaking with fear, hardly surprising, since Flanker is already besting his comrade. You feel the weight of your sword, then bring it round to slice deeply across his chest. The council guard responds with a tough blow, balancing strength and impact. But he has misjudged your strength, and you knock him back. You catch him deep in the side. His tunic reddens. Well played, friend, Flanker murmurs from the other side of the hall. You see his arm grow tense. He is readying for a strong attack. Be aware, he's going to attack you with a strong attack. All right. Ow. Okay, so that he used a lot. So we're gonna go with like a small one, like two, like three. 3.0. 3 3.1. That's okay. 3.1. Time to attack. You swing your sword fast. Pants heavily. He's toying with you. All right, should I defend? I'm going all in. He's coming in hard. Fuck, it hurts so bad. Flanker is back seating you. You whip up your defenses as he attempts a strong stroke. Flanker turns from his own fight to laugh deeply. <laughs> I see you've lost none of your powers of foresight. Uh, let's go like 1.8. Alright, now we go. Things are getting serious. The guard is now fighting for his life. You see his biceps tense. He's preparing to strike hard. More than six? Yes! What was that? That was Flanker and the other guy. He was looking over laughing while clang, 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 clang with fighting the other guy. What do you mean, what was that? You know exactly what the hell that was. 
He's like, ding, 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 ding. They're sword fighting next to me. All right. Uh, it is enough time to finish him. The guard collapses backwards against the stone floor of the chamber. At the same time, you hear a second scream. The other fight has ended as well. Flanker has cut his man down. You and your comrade clean your blades. Flanker says a short prayer and then tastes a fingertip of blood from his victim. Opening the door, he gestures for you to go first. Council. This is the main council chamber. Rewind. Stop. Okay. Sip. Okay, let's do that again. Uh, this is the main council chamber of Kare. That's a hard sentence. A wide room with a domed roof supported by tall pillars, ornately carved with monsters, serpents, and instruments of torture. In the center, twelve throne-like seats are arranged in a circle, with one on a raised dais. Presumably, the seat of the first noble. All are empty. A chalk circle has been drawn just inside the Ring of Thrones. Flanker frowns. This is not right. Walk around the chairs. You make a slow circle of the chairs, Flanker doing likewise in the other direction. No one here. No secret doors, no hidden passages. You notice the chairs all have names on their backs. The names. The throne of the first noble has the name Sansus embossed in gold leaf on its back. The names of the others are smaller and fashioned from plain iron. Mulas, Tiffin, Lorag, Shinva, Zirin, and Theta. It would seem that none of the chairs have been sat in for a very long time. Sit in the throne. What about the circle? You approach the chalk circle. It appears to be just what it seems. A circle inscribed on the stone floor of the room. The only remarkable thing about it is how perfect it is. It is a flawless curve. Mm, rather too well drawn. That makes me suspicious. Don't fucking walk into the circle. <laughs> Don't you dare. I'm going to sit in the throne. You walk back to the first noble's chair and lower yourself down, crossing your legs and surveying the room. Flanker looks up from his forensic investigations of the chalk circle with amusement. Should I go in? Let's just, should I go into it? I don't remember. I don't remember what happens. Does something bad happen? What happens? I don't remember. Leave, leave, leave. Is it? I, I think something bad happens. There is nothing here. This has been a waste of time. You remarked a flanker. The assassin shakes his head. Perhaps I have learned something. He points to the circle on the floor. Do you see that? I think that is a portal trap. No, it's not. What's a portal trap? The portal traps of Kare will build to protect citizens in one area of Kare from the citizens in other areas. Each region, Dwarf Town, Sfinville, the rest, were given one trap to place as they saw fit and to move whenever they chose. Then if anyone from a neighboring town attacked, they could not tell what was a trap and what wasn't. So what is this doing here? Now that is a very good question. By all logic, it should not be here. They are quite invisible. They can appear as anything. But should you stand in one, you will be transported. But where are the nobles? Lanker looks as puzzled as you. I cannot believe they fell for their own trap. They are fools, but not such fools as that. But here is a portal, and they say Sansus entered, yet never left. Hmm. Transported where? You ask, looking at the chalk circle of curiosity. Wherever the setter chooses. Inside solid rock, high in midair. The tradition in Kare has been to dump unfortunates into the sewers. Most do not come back. Blanker moves suddenly towards the door, then turns to you. But the important thing about traps... 
is that they are no longer under the control of the people of Kare. Who controls them now? Your naivety is most pleasing. Who do you think? When a people is given something of power, who takes that thing away? The nobles, of course. For many years now, every trap in Kare has been moved and placed by Sansus himself. And where is Sansus now? He's not here. Indeed. Indeed not. Planker turns about once more. I have seen enough. I must think on what we've seen. So why are the guards here? Are the, are the guards just sitting here? The guards were just outside the door. No, you can't. You can't go there. Sorry. They're, they're, it's in session right now. How long were they there for? We just killed two random guards for absolutely no reason. They were just NPC guards. <laughs> they were just hanging out. I could step into it. Should I step? I'm going in. I'll remind if it sucks. With his attention turned, you take a deep breath. You step towards the chalk circle. You feel nothing as you cross the boundary. But one moment you are in the council chamber, then your foot touches nothing inside and you are falling. Back in the sewer. <laughs> Shit! Alright, back it up. No, 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 no. Don't do it twice. No, back up. Okay, there we go. Oh, we have to do this again. It's fine. And that's probably... Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to call it here. I mentioned that I wanted to do more streams this week, but less time because I'm still not feeling great. And I've got to go do something. I got something I have to do. Uh, that might take a while. So, sorry. Sorry. So, uh, if you weren't here at the beginning of the stream, I said that I was only going to go for like three or four hours. And we're going to stream tomorrow and Thursday and then Saturday. So... Uh, I'm going to get to this point here. So tomorrow, we're going to just pick up right where we left off here. We are absolutely going to get through part two tomorrow. And likely start at least the beginning of part three. Thursday, something else is happening. Which I, don't, I, I don't, can't really talk about right now. Because I don't know um, exactly what is going to happen. So I don't want to like talk about something that either does or doesn't happen. But it should be fun. And then Saturday is Green Screen Movie Night Part 2. Is it a sponsored stream? No. It's not. Something else. But, yeah, we're, um... We'll be back. We'll be back tomorrow. And I say we, and I mean me. Maybe you, if you come back and watch. Okay, cool. That makes me suspicious. Let's leave. There's nothing here. Portal traps. Yes. What does that do? Add clues. What does it look like? Interesting. Oh, okay. Transported where? Can you avoid them? How? Where are the nobles? I don't know. Where does a trap go? I don't know. Who controls them? Why is there a trap here? Who is... Si I gotta get all this info. Okay, let's get out of here. Alright, so... Blanker and I are leaving the council chamber. And we are... I'm going to call it right here when I get out. The road climbs further, looping back on itself as it climbs. Several little alleys disappear off between homes and buildings on either side. This area of town is a spider's web that would be easy to lose oneself in. You pass a shop with a brass sign above its door. Metal Workers Guild. However, it seems to be closed for the night. Oh, it's closed. Okay. Uh, I sneezed, and I'm going to sneeze again. Okay. 
So we'll call it here. We need to go. Remind me tomorrow that we need to go down here. This is the next. <laughs> Destination. So, this is where we're going to go. <laughs> it's a bit. <laughs> I mean, I really am sneezing, but I, I'm pressing the view button a little, like, a, a half second too late, right? <laughs> we need to go to the Fallen Quarter, get the last line. And then I will tell you, if we get the last line down here, for the first time in me ever playing Sorcery... Will I leave Kare without just saying, fuck it, I don't care, Lorag, come with me. This would be this would be the first time. So that's cool. I usually just go through it and go, ah, whatever, I don't care. And then just keep going. Okay, that's it. We'll see you guys tomorrow. We're going to complete part two. We'll do a little bit of part three and then some other stuff. We'll take a break from sorcery uh, this coming week. And we'll see if you guys really like it. I mean, there's... Seems like a lot of people are just having fun hanging out. It's a chill thing to do. It's really just nice. It feels nice to play. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tomorrow, uh, probably around the same time. Somewhere between like 2, 2 to 3-ish. Green screen movie night is this Saturday. Part 2 is this Saturday at 4 p.m. Pacific. We'll see if you're going to show up. We got... I'll be streaming pretty much all week. See you tomorrow. Good night. And goodbye. And then baseball, right? The baseball is um, not long after that. Baseball's the 19th. I wonder if, what, what could we do next week? If we could, if we finish part two of sorcery tomorrow, start part three, do this thing on Thursday, potentially green screen on Saturday. Mm. Cause I'm not, yeah, next week is going to be the last week of like regular streams. Cause obviously, um, leading up to baseball, I'm going to have to spend a lot of time on it. We'll figure, we'll do something fun. What time is baseball? I think it's going to be at like 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I'll get you guys a hard date. Like, I mean, a hard time. Uh, I'll confirm it. Maybe earlier. It's either going to be... I'm trying to think of when it would be. Okay. It's either going to be like 3 or like 2 p.m. <laughs> You're going to give us a hard time? Play Stray. I keep seeing people talk about how that's like the greatest video game ever made. Is it really that good? Is Stray that unbelievable? I keep People keep talking about how, how amazing of a game it is. It's cute. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you soon. See you tomorrow. Or if you're not going to be with us tomorrow, maybe we'll see you on um, Saturday or something. Good night, guys. Take care of yourselves. Call your mother.